There's not a cloud in the sky, but there is electricity in the air at Notre Dame Stadium, overflowing for the 77th renewal of one of college football's top games. The year was 1926. Times were good, and the golden age of American sport was in full bloom. That was the year Newt Rockney, at the urging of his wife, loaded his Notre Dame team on the train and headed for sunny California and a meeting with the mighty Trojans of USC. Thus was born college football's greatest intersectional rivalry. A rivalry without parallel. Each school has laid claim to 11 national championships. And the list of participants reads like a who's who of football. Legendary coaches and some of the most accomplished players in the game. Each meeting laden with national importance. Notre Dame leads the series. However, in recent years, it has been USC in the ascendancy. National champions the last two seasons, boasting a 27-game win streak, led by a coach with an NFL pedigree. But now the Irish have been revived by their own NFL-trained coach and have re-entered college football's elite. It's a matchup worthy of the glory of the past. The year is 2005. It's USC, Notre Dame. Nothing like a big game at Notre Dame, and this is one of the biggest in the 75-year history of the stadium as USC comes calling with the field crowded with stars from past meetings like Marcus Allen and Ronnie Loft on the SC sideline. And for Notre Dame, their last Heisman winner, Tim Brown, and also the great quarterback, Joe Montana. And making their appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium, coming out now, it looks like they're in the green jerseys, surprising everyone to the delight of the over 80,000 fans. Here come the Irish in green. as is his custom, the last one out of the tunnel. making his way to the sideline in a moment we'll see the defending national champions make their appearance here at Notre Dame Stadium for one of the biggest games in the history of this 75 year old facility the build up to the game has been off the charts and the moment is arrived it has for Notre Dame and now the Trojans led by their coach Pete Carroll delaying their appearance perhaps waiting for the surge of emotion to die down in the stadium as the crowd went absolutely crazy when they saw the Irish coming out in their green jerseys. This is a team as defending national champions not bothered by much of the hoopla in fact they're amused by some of it they won't be intimidated here are the top ranked Trojans. Well, hello everyone. Welcome. 
welcome to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond and Pat Hayden. I hope you can feel the excitement. I think this is the best atmosphere for a game I have ever seen in my life. And uh, the buildup has been tremendous. And now, as we said, the moment is here. And Pat, today we're going to see two of the best offenses in all of college football. And in fact, that SC offense is truly awesome. Well, how'd you like to start with the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Matt Leinart, and a guy that's played remarkably well in his first two games against Notre Dame. Nine touchdown passes has not turned the ball over. This is a guy that does a lot of things well, Tom. He's a very smart guy, manages the game particularly well. He throws a touchdown once every 12 attempts. And surprisingly this year, surprisingly mobile. And they're, they're actually rolling it out a little bit more. Now, it just doesn't end with the Heisman Trophy winner. Here's the team MVP from last year. The, the fastest guy in the team, Reggie Bush. The shiftiest guy in college football. The best all-purpose player in college football. A guy who's averaging 194 yards in all-purpose yardage. And a guy that scored five different ways during his career at USC. And maybe the Heisman winner this year. We'll have to wait and see. And of course, you didn't even mention Lindale White, who also, like Bush, is on pace to earn a thousand yards rushing or a couple of receivers that could have a thousand yards receiving Jarrett and Smith it it is something to behold that offense of the Trojans but of course Notre Dame is no slouch under Charlie Weiss either well you know Brady Quinn I think is the most improved player in all of college football whether he's wearing a green jersey or a blue jersey or whatever but this is a guy who's thrown for over 300 yards a game and he's had a magnificent start deadly accurate 65 percent completion percentage he can zip the ball in it or loft it in there when he has to and incredibly strong at 230 pounds has turned five sacks I think into positive plays and then he turns it around and gives it to the very patient very patient Darius Walker a guy who was patient but then can quick and seize the hole when he absolutely has to very very elusive to get those extra few yards I think as you said two great offenses I think it's going to take at least 30 points to win now Notre Dame we didn't even mention Jeff Samarza who has eight touchdown receptions already this season USC and Notre Dame, both starting quarterbacks are primed for today's game. Big games, big robberies. I mean, that's part of the reason why you come to Notre Dame is to play on these big robberies, you know, especially here in Notre Dame Stadium. It's a great tradition, you know, that, that's a great game. The USC Notre Dame rivalry is an awesome game. It's a fun to be a part of. Back with a kickoff after this from your local NBC station. Back at Notre Dame Stadium on a gorgeous afternoon. The USC Trojans, their 27 game winning streak, have won the toss. They defer, so Notre Dame will get the ball first. You had a brief shot there of Anastasio and Grimes were deep for the Irish, and teeing it up is Troy Van Blarkham to kick off for SC. And this game underway, short kick, David Grimes. Grimes hit hard and dropped short of the 20-yard line. Good special teams coverage by the Trojans. Their kickoff coverage had been somewhat of a question mark. Desmond Reed made the hit as Brady Quinn comes out for the Irish starting offensive lineup, hitting 65% of his passes this season. Our starting lineup's brought to you by Adidas. Walker, Schwab starts at fullback. Rashawn Powers Neal, the senior, suspended for a rules violation today, not in uniform. Harris, Santucci, Sullivan, Stevenson, and Lavore up front doing a good job. You'll also see Bob Morton at center a lot. It's a rotation of four for three different positions in the Irish offensive line. So the first play from scrimmage. Brady Quinn hands to Darius Walker, and Walker dropped at the 24-yard line by Thomas Williams, who starts at a linebacker spot for the Trojans. Here's the way they line up defensively. Jackson, Ellis, Ramsey, and Rucker. The linebackers, led by Lua, their leading tackler, Williams, who made that stop, and Keith Rivers. And in the secondary, a somewhat maligned secondary, Wyatt, Ware, Bing, and Walker. And Charlie Weiss said to us when we talked to him this week, this is a game about scoring touchdowns. We cannot win this game scoring field goals. Ball control is fine, but they have to score touchdowns, he said, as Darius Walker on the pitch showed that patience that you admire so much, Pat, and comes up. Tackled by Oscar Lua, enough for the first down. Yeah, Darius Walker has had a terrific year. 400-yard games in five outings. 
you see the 116 rushers in the 4.6 average, but interestingly enough, he has not had any run of more than 20 yards. But he breaks a lot of tackles, makes first downs, and keeps the change moving. First down, Walker on the sweep to the other side. Not much there. He got a yard before Keith Rivers knocked him down. Coach Charlie Weiss scripts the first 18 plays of this game. Yeah, it's ordinarily 15, but when you played the number one ranked team, he had three more. So he's got 18 <laughs> scripted plays, and, you know, he's had two weeks to prepare for this. Very good game planner, good sequencing of plays. It's Charlie Weiss. He said to us the other night, you know, we could probably throw for 500 yards, but that's not the kind of game I want. I want some balance today. Second down. Fasano setting at a tight end spot. Carlson in motion. Pitch it back to Travis Thomas. And Thomas with his first carry is upended as he crosses the 35 by Justin Wyatt as Travis Thomas gets the carry. He's the number two rusher for the Irish. That was his 20th carry of the season. He's a junior from Washington, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and one of those guys I think that's persevered, Tom. Remember, you know, he had some fumbling issues a year ago, but, you know, just kind of kept plugging, played some great special teams, and really has played pretty doggone well as a running back this year for the Irish. Well, those uh, green jerseys look good in high definition, don't they? Hope you're able to watch today's game in high def. Draw play. Walker. Darius Walker cutting off his blocker for a first down. Just short of the 45-yard line, a gain of nine. Tom, remember we were talking, we were really talking to Charlie Weiss about Darius Walker. He said, what do you like most about him? He said, his vision. See, just a good block there, a stalemate by 74, Dan Stevenson. And then the vision of Darius Walker, it's kind of one of those two-way runs on the little draw play. He says he tried to get the ball deep to him and let him use those eyes and that tremendous vision to pick out a hole. Coach Wise says he trusts his vision so much that it doesn't limit his play calling. He can call all sorts of plays for Darius Walker. Looks like Brady Quinn might be adjusting the play. Fake the draw. Quinn got away from the sack. Tucks it under and dives close to midfield. There's the strength of Brady Quinn. Just when we talked about it at the very top, that's at least the sixth uh, time this year that I've watched Brady Quinn, I've watched every game on tape, that he has broken a sure sack that would have been a negative eight-yard loss. But the 6'4", 230-pound strong junior just makes something positive happen. And, you know, as a defensive back, and Darnell Bingham from USC was saying to us this week, you cannot relax when you think you have him sacked because he'll shake it and throw the ball downfield. As he shook the uh, sack of Frosty Rucker there, pass broken up, dangerous throw by Quinn intended for Jeff Samarja. Looked like he had double coverage. Ryan Ting, one of the nickelbacks in for USC on, on that play, really because of injuries, he's actually their fourth different guy they tried at a nickel back and made a nice play on the ball there in the slam. So the Irish facing a third down now, third and six on the first possession of the game. And this is Jeff Samarja right there in the slot that's caught all the touchdown passes this year for the Irish. Eight, Eight of them. Quinn throwing it over the head of Matt Shelton, the intended receiver. Shelton broke in, the pass went out to the sideline, and it'll bring up fourth down for Notre Dame. Yeah, the first time the, the Irish get to see Reggie Bush, we said he's he scored five different ways as a player at USC. One of them as a punt returner, he's done it as a kick returner, as a passer, and then as a runner and a receiver. So Bush awaits the punt by DJ Fitzpatrick. And it, and it should be an angled punt. You don't want to punt the ball down the middle to him. It's Patrick averaging 40.7 a punt this season. Bush says get away from it. Takes a good Notre Dame bounce. And a roll dead at about the seven yard line. Nice punt by Fitzpatrick to back the Trojans up. USC's first possession when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Lincoln Financial Group, providing powerful financial resources to help you say hello future. By Adidas Basketball, impossible is nothing. And by Coca-Cola, make it real. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson inside of the Golden Dome at Notre Dame Stadium. Over 80,000 on hand for this meeting between the top-ranked Trojans of USC and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. 
Matt Leinart about to get his first chance under center. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner. 65% completions as you see our Adidas starting offensive lineups for USC. Starting from their own seven, the two tight ends hand to Reggie Bush. And Bush threads his way through the Notre Dame defense for seven yards on first down. Tackled by Maurice Crum. As we look at the Notre Dame defensive front, Abby Amiri, Laws, Landry, and Fromm. Maurice Crum, who made that stop, along with Mays and Hoyt, who is the leading tackler and leading sack maker for the Irish. Wooden in Dukeway, Zibikowski and Richardson in the secondary. A lot of pressure on the corner, so that front four from Notre Dame is really key to get to Matt Leinart and knock him down some. Second down and three. Lendale Hoyt. He stopped for no gain. Trevor Laws hit him right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Linda White, you don't stop him for no gain very often. You know, he's a kind of guy, big, burly back at 235 pounds. You see what he's averaging, 7.6 yards per carry. This is the kind of play in these third down situations this year at USC has moved Matt Leiner around a lot. They've actually rolled him out quite a bit. Reggie Bush on the sideline. And Lindale White in the backfield and in motion. Leinert's first pass broken up and nearly intercepted. Richardson was there. Corey May is a, the man, I believe, that knocked the pass down. Yeah, and Matt Leinert took a shot from Derek Landry. A lot of good things there on the opening series for the Irish defense. Forced a third down, get Leinert's face, and then nearly picked it off. So on to punt is Tom Malone, who has punted only 12 times this season, and sends it on its way. Tom Zibikowski has dead aim on it, takes it backing up at the 25, gets by the first special teams man of the Trojans, and claws his way to the 42-yard line, where he is stopped by Keith Rivers. 60-yard punt, but 16 on the return as Notre Dame gets it back. Each team has had one possession, no score yet. USC and Notre Dame. Notre Dame did uh, benefit from the exchange of punts. Yeah, picked up 24 yards in the exchange of punts. And that's that, you know, those hidden yards you talk about in special teams. Travis Thomas at tailback for the Irish on this first down play. Thomas, flea flicker, back to Quinn, sails it downfield and partially Deflected and intercepted by Keith Rivers. And Rivers takes it back into Irish territory at about the 43-yard line. 14-yard return before he's pushed out of bounds by Ryan Harris. Well, it was the old flea flicker. You know, you come out, you wear the green jerseys, and you, you run the flea flicker in your second series after getting real good play, uh, position. It looked like Samarja was open, but Brady Quinn got hurt. See, here's Samarja trying to get the ball to him. But the right on the, the throw was yeah, the altered by uh, the Juan Ramsey, I believe, the nose tackle, who got to tip the ball, and then it heads up Keith Rivers, makes the interception. And you know USC during Pete Carroll's tenure there, might have been the, Frosty Rucker that got the. Uh, yeah, it was Frosty. Yeah. Has thrived on turnovers. Right. Yeah. During P Pete Carroll's five years there, they're plus 77 in the turnover category. That's that been one of the signatures in their success at SC under Pete Carroll. So after the turnover, spot the ball right at midfield. First down. Liner with a fake. Winding up and throwing to a wide open receiver. Jarrett makes a sliding catch for a first down, a 13-yard gain. Yeah, we talked about those turnovers and, you know, Pete Carroll, a defensive-minded coach. For all the, the excitement they had, they generate on offense. Look, look at those numbers, you know. They were first in 2004 and 10th right now, but plus 78 now in his four and a half years as the head coach. Carroll's also the defensive coordinator. Reggie Bush, the lone setback. Bush with a hole, cuts to the outside, breaks a tackle. Reggie Bush for the touchdown. Right into.
to the SC band, Reggie Bush scampers 37 yards. You know, I, I think of Reggie Bush as, as the First Amendment with hips. You know, it just just he kind of expresses him himself in his own way. Just kind of hurdle the guy there. Okay, he's got some power. He's got speed. He's the fastest guy on the team. But you see the way he hurdled one of the Irish defenders as well. This is a great stage for someone to make a Heisman statement today, and Reggie Bush made the first. Yeah, he's a leading actor. And the extra point by Mario Danello is good. So a turnover, the interception by Rivers, and then the pretty run by Reggie Bush. Puts SC on the board first. Reggie Bush. Puts the Trojans up, 7-zip. After the turnover, Reggie Bush puts the Trojans up on top, 7 to nothing. And, you know, it's, let's go back and look at the touchdown and watch how many people really have a chance to tackle Reggie Bush. But he makes an incomparable cut. But there's one, two, three, four green jerseys that have a legitimate shot. Hit him at a cutback and then a hurdle and then the speed. I mean, that is his 72nd play over 20 yards at USC. The fastest man on the Trojan team takes it to the end zone, and SC, which has been notoriously slow starting in recent weeks, gets on the board first after the turnover, the interception of Brady Quinn. Pete Carroll's team on top. Ben Barkham to kick off. Anastasio and Grimes are deep. And he nearly buried it out of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Bring it out to the 20. Well, they say he's the most remarkable player in college football, and he's made some pretty remarkable plays against the Bruins a year ago. But he's a good dancer, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Ballroom dancing? <laughs> It's, it's kind of like a, trying to tackle a balloon in the wind. You know, you just, you just never know exactly where he's going to end up. And he took it in for the score as after the turnover, SC with two plays, 50 yards. It took all of 34 seconds for them to score. Three wide receiver set. Hand off to Walker. And Walker stopped after a tough yard by the center of the SC defense. And then Frosty Rucker off the corner as well. Number 90, the guy who kind of tipped the ball earlier to cause the interception a guy that in high school he was an all-state running back now he's uh, the last two years has been a defensive lineman defensive end putting a lot of good pressure on the quarterback this season Tustin high school running back as you said and linebacker now defensive end Fasano in motion Quinn with a play action fake out of the backfield to Walker, Darius Walker. Run out of bounds by Keith Rivers, short of the first down. That's the 18th catch of the season for Darius Walker. But he really wasn't even part of the passing game last year. Absolutely. He, he, you know, we talked about Brady Quinn being the most improved player in all of college football. Darius Walker's had a big improvement, too, because they've kept him in in those passing games. You know, he, he pass blocks well. He catches well. Good, very good screen receiver. Caught a, a screen for a touchdown in their opening game. Empty backfield, five wide receivers in this formation. And Brady Quinn taking it straight ahead, and uh, this is going to be close. You know, they tried that against Purdue, actually, for about a seven-yard gain, just kind of a quick snap and having Brady Quinn just run a quarterback sneak against nickel defense. And it is short of the first down, fourth down for Notre Dame. Now, you know, Charlie Weiss is going to punt it here, but I think this is the kind of game that Charlie Weiss is going to end up going for a lot on fourth down and one and fourth down and two. Actually, they're going to go for it here. And SC takes a timeout. Fourth down and a less than a yard. Notre Dame sends in Thomas and Schwab in the backfield to go for it, and SC burns a timeout. And you know, Charlie Weiss has an awful lot of confidence in his offensive line. And, you know, he feels, hey, we can't, you know, let this game get away early, so we're going for it on fourth and one. Will he roll the dice? We'll find out. 
Back at Notre Dame Stadium, Charlie Weiss set to take a big gamble here, fourth down and a half yard, but the ball just short of the Irish 30 yard line, fourth down and a half yard. He's going to go for it. And remember, Rashawn Powers Neal out of this game, ordinarily their short yardage runner. Notre Dame has converted four of eight fourth downs this season. They break the backfield. Nobody in the backfield. Maybe trying to draw them up. Yep. Brady Quinn again didn't need much. Just yeah. needed to take the ball across the 30, and he does. He's got it. Nice play call by Charlie Weiss. Spread him out, open backfield. Gives the quarterback a little bit more room. A big, strong quarterback. A big, strong quarterback at 6'4", 230 pounds. He's already seen him shake one sack off. I'll tell you what, he didn't have much margin of despair, though, as Frosty Rucker had him wrapped up, but he is able to lean forward and get the first down. So the first big gamble of the game, Charlie Weiss pays off for the Irish to keep the drive going. Well, remember, he went for, went for it against what Michigan State on 4th and 15 and converted. Quinn, first down pass, in trouble, deflected and almost intercepted again. The protection broke down for Brady Quinn. So that, that had to be good coverage by USC because Brady Quinn had pretty good protection early on. Just kind of double pump, double clutch, waiting for somebody to get open. And then finally the rush gets there, the ball gets tipped. Blitz on the outside by Lua, who got there late, and also Thomas Williams. So two of the three linebackers come after Brady Quinn. And Williams, a man that deflected it. So Brady Quinn opens up only one of five, including that interception. Quinn again has to adjust and throw it complete. What a catch made by Fasano as tight end. Despite the coverage from Keith Rivers, Fasano able to hang on to it. You know, he hangs on to a lot of them, doesn't he? Anthony Fasano is 24th catch of the year. One of the premier tight ends in all of college football. And I tell you, when you're a quarterback, Tom, and you're kind of struggling a little bit, you're, you know, you're one of five and you're throwing an interception, boy, if you have a big tight end and catch, is that a friendly sight out there? And six foot five, Anthony Fasano goes upstairs to haul it in. First down, Irish. Pitch, Thomas makes a cut up, takes it to the 46-yard line. Okay, so, you know, Charlie Weiss, you can see the kind of respect he has for USC's offense. Playing it a little close to the vest with the runs and runs and runs because they've been a pretty dynamic team thus far, Tom, in the, in the passing game, you know, averaging over 300 yards a game through the air. Brady Quinn with those five games, over 300 yards passing. The Notre Dame record five touchdowns against Michigan State. Yeah, he's thrown more touchdowns than Matt Leinert of USC and Vince Young and Chris Leak. Three tight ends in this formation. Freeman, Carlson, Fasano. Handed off to Thomas. Tackled at midfield, short of the first down. And so they'll be just short of that yellow line, which marks the first down. Today's first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. Did I mention to you, you sound much better in high definition? <laughs> you really do. Oh, I know you didn't say look much better. No, you don't. That's, you absolutely don't. <laughs> that's a scary thought, Tom and Pat in high def. <laughs> Third and two. Thomas is the tailback, swap the fullback. Travis Thomas following his fullback, pounding ahead and thrown back to the SC defense. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. It should be enough for the first down. Keith Rivers with another tackle yeah, for the said, Trojans. You said pounding ahead. Good use of words, Tom. And Charlie Weiss said to us Thursday night, he, Travis Thomas is going to play a lot. And he said, what I like about him, he likes contact. And I tell you, you know, that, that is what you like on third and two. You don't want to have a guy who's afraid of contact first 18 plays they were the scripted plays 12 rushing and six passing the freshman fullback Schwab actually uh, fanned on his man that time but Thomas still able to pick up the first down he's the setback give it to him nowhere to go they turned him around he lost him two or three yards was he going to pitch it back to Quinn again no I don't think so and look, the way he turned around like that of course I didn't think they were ever going to come out in green jerseys either when we <laughs> talked to Charlie Weiss this summer remember Tom right. he said no, no I'm never going to do the green jersey thing 
He was just trying to spin away, I guess. Yeah, good quick penetration by Cedric Ellis, the nose tackle. Pete Carroll said to us this week, hey, Cedric Ellis at nose tackle is going to give the Irish offensive line some trouble with his quickness. Yeah, Trevor Weiss did say, I'll never wear the green jersey. So here they are in the green. They've lost their last three games wearing green. But the last three times they've worn green against SC, they've won. Oscar Lua stopping Darius Walker there for a short game. It's going to be third and long as we check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, John. Well, we heard the reaction from the Notre Dame fans when they saw the green jerseys. Even Joe Montana down here told me that he was surprised. Now, the last time that Notre Dame won these was against Boston College back in 2002. And I asked Charlie Weiss as he made his way to the sideline, when did he decide to do this? And he said two weeks ago. That must have been after the Purdue game. And then I asked him why. And boy, the look he gave me caused me to backpedal. But I got the feeling that it was just the moment, just the right game for the green jerseys. John? All right, Lewis. Quinn in the shotgun here. Third and long. Third down and ten. He has four wide receivers. Quinn with time. Lost it for Stovall. Couldn't catch it. And a flag down. John Walker will be called for interference. Good play by Brady Quinn for giving his wide receiver a chance. Keeping the ball in bounds. How many times do you see when a guy's covered, quarterback throws it out of bounds? Smart play by Brady Quinn as he gives his big wide receiver, Maurice Stovall, who's had a marvelous year, a chance. 6-5 against Walker, who was beaten last week. D, pretty good coverage there. And then the late pass interference, good call by the officials, and a good throw by Quinn. I like the way he put the air under it and yep. gave his big receiver a chance, as you see the obvious interference call on Walker. Boy, you know, Brady Quinn has really become a good deep ball thrower, hasn't he? Yeah, we, the, the knock on him the last two years was that he never throws deep. Well, you know, and earlier this year, they kind of dinked it a little bit, but as the, uh, the offensive expanded, they've given him a lot of shots downfield. He's thrown it to Maurice Stovall and Jeff Samarja in particular down the field well. And his coach, Charlie Weiss, who should know, says he has a bright future in the NFL. He's just a junior. Swing pass to swap the fullback. Tough to get him down, but SC does at the 30. There's a penalty marker on the play. Justin Wyatt, the tackle. You know, you, you mentioned this being a Heisman Trophy stage, and we have three main actors, and Matt Leinart, of course, and Reggie Bush. But Brady Quinn, if he could pull off an upset and have a big day, he would be absolutely on top of the list. Personal foul against the Trojans. Personal foul. Defense number 90. Blow to the head. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's Frosty Rucker, who's been so active here early in the game off the defensive line for the Trojans, called for the blow to the head. Well, they called it on number 90. No, I don't think it was there. Frosty Rucker was on the other side of the field. Here he is, right down here. Yeah, what? Yeah, there's it. Yeah, that, that was might Frosty have been Rucker being number 20. You think? No, in the second replay, Frosty Rucker did use oh, his did? right hand as okay. a club. So okay. a good call by the officials. Well, Notre Dame has been awfully good inside the 20, 19 trips they've had, or excuse me, 21 trips and 19 touchdowns. Three tight ends. Thomas, the running back. Travis Thomas trying to cut it back. Hesitation. Thomas for the touchdown. Trojan penalties, punch it in, and a Fitzpatrick extra point away from tying the game. Up and good. And you remember Travis Thomas, too, not only was it a nice touchdown run on third and two, remember he kind of bowled his way for three yards as well. So the fourth down, you know, quarterback sneak for the, uh, for the first down. 
and then a nice nifty run by Travis Thomas and a delighted Charlie Weiss. Charlie Weiss rolled the dice on fourth down and a yard deep in his own territory, picked up the first down, marches down the field for the tying score. We're tied with just over three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Watch the touchdown run, but the block by John Sullivan, the center. Watch what number 78 does. Really clears the way for Travis Thomas' cutback run. Just kind of pushes the nose tackle, Tofi, out of the way. And then Tom Thomas sees it with that good vision. The longest touchdown run of his career, 16 yards, his third of the year. But terrific block by Sullivan. Yeah, the longest run of Thomas's career. He went his first 14 games without scoring a touchdown. He has one now in each of the last three games. There's the dangerous Reggie Bush deep to receive the kick by Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's a good kick when you don't kick it to him. Yep, to Reed. And Reed still on his feet close to the 40-yard line. As we check in with Jimmy Roberts in New York for an update. Jimmy? Alabama undefeated. Ole Miss yet to win in conference on paper. It shouldn't have been close on grass. It was no time left on the clock. 31 second, 31 yard field goal from Jamie Christensen. And Alabama stays undefeated. They're 6 0. Best national ranking in five years. Tom? All right, Jimmy. So uh, the Crimson Tide yeah. with a tough afternoon in Oxford. Come away with a win to stay unbeaten. It's never easy in college football, Tom. You know, it just, it's not easy staying undefeated. SC wants to stay undefeated. They start from their own 39-yard line. They send Bush in motion. He resets as a wide receiver. And Leinert looking his way. Across the middle and caught. Dominique Bird. All the way. And knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line by Tom Zibikowski. The tight end wide open across the middle. Rambles deep into Irish territory. What did Charlie Weiss say to us Thursday night? Choose your poison. You know, Dominique Bird is a guy that really has only caught 10 passes all season long. But you see how nimble he is for a 265-pound tight end. And then watch Dwayne Jarrett, number eight, right to the bottom screen, come up and get a block that cleared him for another eight or 10 yards. Zibikowski saved the touchdown. 52 yards on the pass to Bird. Liner hands to his running back. And Reggie Bush is able to take it inside the five down to about the three-yard line stopped by Ndukwe. You know, Tom, some people think of Reggie Bush as kind of a finesse runner, and he can give you that, but woof, he can make you miss as well. You know, <laughs> kind of like a leaf in the wind. And, and, and he's got some power, too. He's breaking a lot more tackles this year. We obviously earlier saw some speed from him. So thunder and lightning, Bush... And White, and White is in a tailback now behind Hancock, the fullback. Lendale White looking for a hole, breaks to the outside and scores. I tell you, the, the fullback. And this offense doesn't get a lot of credit, but David Kirtman threw a terrific block for Lendell White. Watch the fullback, Kirtman, kind of weave his way through some traffic. Get that lead block that, that Lendell White saw and felt and then ran around for the touchdown. Took Ambrose Wooden took him right out of the play, and now Danello will try the extra point. And he has it good. Danello, who hasn't missed an extra point with a lot of work this season. Lendale White with his 11th touchdown run of the season. And just like that, SC answers the Notre Dame touchdown. Bang, bang. They're in the end zone again. Trojans up 14-7. Thunder and Lightning have put uh, USC on top. That's uh, Thunder, Lendale White. <laughs> who scored the latest touchdown after Lightning. Reggie Bush scored the first. Well, you know, they both scored touchdowns, both of them, in four of the last five games. There's uh, Lightning. Kind of cool to have a nickname like that, right? <laughs> well, you, you need one. You need a nickname, more Tom. Like, <laughs> I'm more like Grip. <laughs> Van Barkham kicking to David Grimes. Out of the end zone this time. He's gotten each kick further than the last. And that one is touchback. 
off the foot of Van Blarker. Well, how about the uh, touchdown runs by old Thunder and Lightning? Well, I think it was Lightning first who got off a little 36-yarder outrunning the Irish defense. And then after, you know, they kicked away from Reggie Bush. He got a good kickoff return and a nice drive. Lendale White put, punches it in from three yards out. You know, two completely different types of back, but they, they seem to use them pretty doggone well. I'll say. What a luxury to have two like that. Darius Walker. Tough going. Look at the white jerseys. Nine of them around the football on first down, and White stopped for no gain. Or uh, Walker stopped for no gain. Yeah, the last few games, they've been awfully, awfully tough. You see both over 100 yards against Oregon and again against Arizona State and then Arizona. I mean, you know, the state of Arizona is delighted to have those guys out of the state <laughs> after the last few weeks. <laughs> Well, USC has pretty, played pretty good first down defense when the Irish have come into this game averaging over six yards on first down this season. David Grimes, nowhere to go. Darnell Bing was not fooled as they handed it to Grimes on the end around and another loss setting up third and long for the Irish you know, number 20 the right part of your screen Darnell big being their strong safety playing very close to the line of scrimmage and there for the reverse you know we had a chance to talk to Darnell on Wednesday and he said boy this Notre Dame offense they have the full package and he was singing the praises of Brady Quinn saying in particular he's so strong just when you think you have him sacked he beats the sack and throws the ball downfield well, they'll be looking for a sack here on third and long. And Brady Quinn calls a timeout with a play clock down to one. So Notre Dame has to use its first timeout with a play clock about to expire. To avoid the penalty, they take timeout. It comes with 30 seconds left in the opening quarter. And for much more Notre Dame football, log on to NBCSports.com. Click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, for Pat's analysis, including his look at how Irish quarterback Brady Quinn has become a top Heisman Trophy candidate. Plus, vote for your choice for Irish MVP. That's all at NBCSports.com. Do you know how to get online? <laughs> Seriously. You know? Just because I don't have a BlackBerry, let me explain <laughs> this to you. Why would you want emails to follow you everywhere? Uh, you're right about that. Well, you know, important third down here for, you know, anytime you, you, you play this, this USC team, you know you're going to have to score 30 points, right, to, to beat these guys. And so this is a really important third down, not to convert, so they don't give USC good field position. Well, they haven't shown any signs of stopping SC today either, yeah. except for the first drive that the Trojans had. Well, good good pass rush on Brady Quinn. So he's only only three of seven. He came in, excuse me, came in three of seven. <laughs> you need to, uh, it, I need some help here. You didn't uh, allow for the windage. You've gotta, I, you really, you got to let that go. But three of seven uh, when he's completing 65% of his passes on the year. You know, this is an Irish team that strikes me. They're much like Charlie Weiss. You know, they don't get discouraged early. They just kind of keep chugging. Well, you know, that's like SC. They didn't get discouraged early. Training Oregon, training Arizona State. They have a uh, supreme confidence about them, and they've been able to back it up. Third down and 10. Shotgun Quinn, four wides. Thomas in the backfield. Comes the blitz. Irish pick it up, and Quinn lost it for Stovall. Diving catch, no good. Couldn't hold on. Boy, John that, that, Walker defending again. Yeah, that's exactly. Twice they've tried that ingredient. That played a deep ball to Maurice Stovall against number 18, John Walker. First it was pass interference. This time, Maurice Stovall makes a nice play in the ball, and he's been making those catches this year, but the ball hits the ground and comes out. Would have been 37 yards as he adjusts to the football, but just can't hold on. By the way, we should mention there is no instant replay today. In a non-conference game, it's at the option of the visiting team. Pete Carroll said, I don't like it, never have liked it. No instant replay today. Fitzpatrick on fourth down, line drive. Here's Reggie Bush. Look out. And they wrap him up early. Good coverage with the special teams of the Irish. 
Great coverage by, I think it was Leo Farine. Farine gets credit for the stop, a 41-yard punt. They hold Bush to only two yards on the return. You know, it's one of those kind of guys, you just hold your breath every time you get to kick the ball to, to Reggie Bush. But good coverage down here by Farine on the bottom of the screen, just kind of outran the gunner. It was a poorly, a poorly drawn circle of mine. I'm going to have to use mine. <laughs> well, at least it was around the player circle, this time. Yeah. But really good coverage by Fareen. And you never know when that play does he save, you know, a 40-yard gain by that guy. Can you imagine that? His career average is 10.2 yards per touch. Wow. 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Leinert under pressure now. Unloads. Dropped. <laughs> Steve Smith had it right in his chest. Could not hold on. Yeah, Steve Smith, actually, they're really their best wide receiver in terms of hands. Best route runner and probably has the best hands on the team. You know, empty backfield, which ordinarily means a quick throw. And perfectly thrown by Matt Leinert. And would have been an easy first down. On its first possession, USC went three plays and out. The last two possessions, they brought only five plays to cover 111 yards and two touchdowns. That was the sixth, that incomplete pass. Flag is down. Saw the audible attempted to be called by Matt Liner, doing a lot more of that this Dead year. Ball. False start. Offense number 83. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Fred Davis, guilty of the uh, false start, comes out of the game. Ouch. Don't want to go see Pete Carroll right yeah. about now. Yeah, you can't get a, a note from your mom when the coach is that hot, you know? So with eight seconds on the clock, first quarter, it's second down and 15. One-on-one -on -one coverage up here. Is that a circle? Oh, it's got a triangle. Leinert steps up, deflected. <laughs> Made a diving attempt for the interception, but I don't think it was good. Brandon Hoyt had a chance as Leinert limps off. Matt Leinert, you know, took a cheap shot in the Arizona State game, had seven or eight stitches under his chin. He has a beard, and they had to pull out part of his beard, whisker by whisker. Well, you know, I, I think in, in whether you're playing college or professional football, if you don't have a tough guy playing quarterback, you're not going to win many games. And you've got a tough guy in that line. Most guys would not have played after that cheap shot against Arizona State. Third down and 15, three seconds in the quarter. Resetting Reggie Bush in the slot, top of the screen. Bird motion. Liner sets up the screen, it's dropped. Lindale White dropped the football as it looks like Notre Dame was really getting some penetration anyway. Yeah, Brandon Hoyt would have stopped the screen. It was in a little inside screen, which they've run successfully this year to a variety of players, but Brandon Hoyt read it perfectly. And that play will bring the first quarter to a close, so it'll be a punting situation for the Trojans when we come back to start the second quarter. At the end of one, 14-7, we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. Notre Dame Stadium on a gorgeous October afternoon as the Fighting Irish rank ninth in the nation host the top-ranked defending national champion USC Trojans who have won 27 in a row. It's fourth down and 15 for USC, so Tom Malone ready for his second punt. Tom Zibikowski gathers it in at the 22-yard line. Made the first man miss, and then is pounded out of bounds, short of the 30-yard line. That's where the Irish will take over. Well, the first quarter, time of possession, certainly in the Irish's favor. You know, it's what you want to do against this USC team, right? They did control the ball, but as Charlie Weiss said, they didn't score touchdowns. They scored one, while uh, SC, the Trojans, came into today's game averaging over eight yards per play. They're averaging 10.8 in the first quarter against Notre Dame. The Irish averaging just 3.2. From the 28-yard line, first down. Quinn with a play-action fake. He's going to run with it. 
Brady Quinn close to the 35 yard line chased down by Oscar Lua about a six yard game. Yeah look at looking for Jeff Samarja their deep play threat the guy who's caught those uh, eight touchdown passes deep on that play had him open early but got flushed out of the pocket couldn't get the ball to him. Yeah, that's what, there's Jeff Samarja what a what a year he's had you know 28 catches eight of those going for touchdowns and what I like about him, Tommy, he really uses his hands. Does he's not a body catcher? You know, he's he's always going to reach out and catch the right. ball early in the in the ball flight. Sometimes just one hand reached out to, to make the catch, as he had that sparkling catch against Purdue. Handed to Darius Walker, picking his way forward for a first down. Gain of nine, first down Irish, stopped by Keith Rivers. You know, he, he starts slowly on a lot of runs, Darius Walker, but that's that patience we talk about and the vision. He's just kind of waiting for things to develop. He said you just can't rush it sometimes. So he gets it, you know, seven yards deep, waits, waits, and then the burst. And then enough elusiveness. He's had an awfully solid year for the Irish. You know, really a durable guy, doesn't take a lot of direct hits. Had four 100 yard rushing games in the first five and could have had it against Purdue. That one, Quinn chased, wins it toward Fasano incomplete as the rush forced him to uh, try a desperation heave just short of Fasano. You see the corner blitz by number 18, John Walker, because if he had some time, Lawrence Jackson, a defensive end, was covering Anthony Fasano. It's one of the things you, know, you blitz the corner, you got to drop off a defensive end and he had a matchup Jackson against the tight end. Second down and 10. The play calling of Charlie Weiss against the defensive calls of Pete Carroll. Two coaches that learned their trade in the NFL. Matched up here at Notre Dame Stadium today. Short drop. Quinn's pass on target. Maurice Stovall. Well, it's clear that Charlie Weiss is trying to pick on John Walker, isn't it? Yep. I mean, that's the third ball. Two deep ones to Maurice Stovall. That a quick out. And it's been kind of something that Charlie Weiss did. As soon as you have loose coverage on Maurice Stovall, if you don't bump and run him, they'll throw just a quick ball to him on a break and tackle. That time, kind of a quick out for a first down. 11 yards, first down, Notre Dame. Maurice Stovall lost, what, 15, 20 pounds? That's one of the things Charlie Weiss said. And he said we wanted him with a lot more stamina. And as we talked to him this week, he said, you know, I just feel a lot lighter on my feet. Yeah, Maurice said he even feels quicker, and the stamina definitely improved. First down pass, Brady Quinn. Whoa, oh, dangerous throw right into traffic intended for Fasano. He had a couple of Trojans draped all over him. Wow. Yeah, Oscar Lua, the middle linebacker in particular. Number 45 right here in the middle. Gets this right in here, knocks it away. Quinn wanted the interference call, didn't get it. It's second down and 10. That USC continues to play good first down defense. You know, one of the hallmarks of Charlie Weiss the first five games was playing, you know, very good first down games. Samarja can't handle the throw from Quinn. He had Stovall in front of him getting a block too. Might have been something brewing. But Quinn's pass over the head of Jeff Samarja over the head and behind it appeared. Brady just seems a little quicker than he ordinarily is. Only four of 12 on the day. Again, a guy who came in with playing as uh, he was a hot quarterback. So third down and 10 from the USC 46 yard line. You know, I think Charlie Weiss is thinking too, hey, two downs to get these 10 yards. Quinn in the shotgun. Fasano in motion. Quinn rolls to his right, plants his feet, and delivers. It's caught on the sideline. Got one foot in, did Jeff Samarja for a gain of 13 yards. Well, he continues to do it. You know, and, and using those hands. If you're a body receiver, and you, catch, you know, you have to use your body to catch the ball, you don't make this catch. He's kind of stabbed it with his left hand, got the left foot in, but, you know, he continues to make remarkable catches. If he got the left foot in, it was very close. No, but as we said, no replay. Yeah, no review today. And Pete Carroll said, you know, I just don't like replay. Never have, and sometimes they get it wrong. It slows down the pace of the game. Samarja with his first catch gives Notre Dame another first down. This time it's a 33 of the Trojans. 
On the draw play, Travis Thomas, short yardage. Take a look at the last play here by Samarja, the catch. To get a foot in, he's got possession. I don't think he got in there. Don't think he dotted the eye. Well, it goes as a catch. Keeps the Notre Dame drive going. It's now second down and nine from the 32-yard line of SC. Trojans leading 14-7 in the second quarter. Thomas resets at a wideout spot. Quinn had Fasano. Fasano dropped down and found a dead spot in the defense yeah. of the Trojans and just sort of sat down and Quinn threw it 10 feet over his head. And the reason, because he had somebody in his face, I, I think it was Thomas Williams who came right rushing in, jumped up, and, and Brady Quinn tried to lob it over his head. And when he did it, he just threw it too high. Yeah, you see Williams? He forces the high throw. Fasano never had a chance. Yeah, Fasano actually read the blitz, settled down just as he's supposed to. So third down and nine. Quinn goes for the end zone. Samarja. him just kind of set the defensive back Justin Wyatt up no he's not rushing he's not rushing he's waiting waiting and then with the hands again once more if he waits to come down the ball gets knocked away maybe he's tackled but goes up and gets it as high a point he's six five and that's the sixth straight game where he's had a touchdown reception tying the record is ninth of the season as the extra point by Fitzpatrick Splits the uprights, and Brady Quinn has thrown a touchdown pass to Jeff Samarja, and Charlie Weiss and the Irish tie it at 14. Now, even when Samarja's covered, he's open. I mean, he had seven-year, uh, seven-inch height advantage on Justin Wyatt, and Brady Sewell Quinn did a great job again of keeping the ball in the field to play. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader, and by Xerox, helping your business grow with technology, document management, and consulting services. From Notre Dame Stadium, Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson, Jeff Samarja has just received a pass in the end zone from Brady Quinn, number 10. And Notre Dame has tied it at 14. This was the uh, point where these two teams were in 2003. And then the Trojans reeled off 31 straight points to win it 45-14. They've beaten Notre Dame three straight times. Fitzpatrick the kickoff. Reggie Bush from the five. Reversing his field. Spinning and down at the 19-yard line. Now, Jeff Samarja has made some important catches this season, but two on that drive to make this game even. The one on the sideline that kept the chains moving as he stabbed it with his left hand, and then a perfectly timed jump. And Brady Quinn giving his 6'5 receiver a chance, knowing he has a seven-inch height advantage, and he responds. Samarja, the free spirit with the long hair, and they call him Shark. Notre Dame's best baseball pitcher as well. Really good body control. And the free spirit. We enjoy talking to him. He'd rather be fishing than doing anything else, he says. Oh, Had some hardship early in his life when he lost his mom. He's become a star in this junior season. Lendale White. Corral. Dropped. For the first time, you're going to see Lendell White, I think, get tackled for a loss. I mean, one of the things about Lendell White is generally he is moving forward. But I think the Irish got him for a yard loss. Victor good. Abbey Amiri, I think, got him. Yeah, good early penetration by Derek Landry, who is so quick off the ball. Landry gets his right hand on him, slows him down, and then three green jerseys around him. Second down and ten. Reggie Bush down here. 
Bottom of the screen. Should have been a delay of game call, and there was a delay of game call. Actually, no play, no play. Time had expired on the play clock. It's a hard the, the place, yeah, no, hard place to audible. Deafening. Yeah, and a hard place to audible. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. We were talking to Matt Leinard earlier this week. He said he didn't think the crowd noise was going to be a problem. They played up at Oregon, which is a tough place to play in the Pac-10, Arizona State, but I don't think anything like no. the noise you're getting today. No. Look at that, two of six. And it's probably Matt worse Leonard. on the other end of the field before the student section of Notre Dame. It's pretty loud right here. Bush. Look at him make people miss. Gets to the outside. He was on pace to lose three or four yards. Instead, he makes a six-yard game. Maurice Crum chased him down. You know, it, amazing. You know, Matt Leinart was last year's, watch the, as you watch the, the moves, he's got the moves of a belly dancer. He, he stops and starts and goes in this way and that way. Matt Leinart was the Heisman Trophy winner last year, but he wasn't even the team MVP. That guy was. Reggie Bush finished fifth in the Heisman voting. But Matt Leiner voted for him to be team MVP. Third down. Leiner's screen pass. Brandon Hoyt made a great play on Reggie Bush. The elusive Bush had blockers in front of him, and Brandon Hoyt got him down by a shoe top. And that's the second time in this first half that Brandon Hoyt has smelled the screen, read it perfectly. The first one to Lendell White, this one to Reggie Bush. And then, you know, just, you know, it's pretty hard tackling that guy in the open field, but a great tackle by Hoyt. Malone got the punt away, nearly blocked. Here's Zibikowski. Trying to get to the outside. He has blockers in front. Tom Zimikowski, Malone the beat, shakes him off to the five and a touchdown. with a 60-yard punt return for the touchdown. Yeah, he told us his best punch was the left hook to the body. <laughs> he just gave the Trojans one. Fitzpatrick tacks on the extra point. I tell you, you know, a, a really a determined run out. Uh, Tom Zivikowski is a strong safety, not the fastest returner on the team, but he picks up a good block about the 50-yard line from number 81, Rob Woods. And then it was just all breaking tackles and determination to get the ball in the end zone. Big special teams play for the Irish. And the Irish take the lead on Zibikowski's 60-yard return, 21-14. Notre Dame Stadium, seen from the Goodyear blimp, rocking as the Irish take the lead. For 80 years, one of America's most recognizable images, the Goodyear blimp floating overhead, giving us these aerial views, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance tires. Tom Zibikowski, the first Notre Dame punt return for a touchdown in 43 games. Last time, it was Vontez Duff against Maryland back in 2002. You know, and he broke about four tackles to get the ball in the end zone. Fitzpatrick kicks. Directional kick, that's a loose ball as it rolls into the end zone over the head of Reed, who couldn't field it, and then down for the touchback. And Reed might be hurt, number 22. Well, you know, the uh, the Trojans have struggled on, on special teams this year. As you look at Reed, they gave up 159 yards in kick returns last week 
to Arizona and then give up a long uh, touchdown on a punt return today. This is a, a very valuable special teams player for the Trojans, Desmond Reed. He's also a backup running back to Bush and White. Carried 19 times this season for 137 yards and a touchdown. Oh, yeah, just kind of on his right knee. Yeah. They'll help Reed off the field. We'll take a break. Ten twenty-three left, second quarter, 21-14, Notre Dame. And the SC offense back out. The It's been quick strike or nothing for the Trojans. Their two TD drives took five plays. Their other three possessions have been nine plays, three punts. Notre Dame's had the ball for 14 minutes. Play action fake, Leinert rolls, pass short, complete to Bird, the tight end, who had a... Let's go back to that tumble yard by Tom Zivikowski. Tom, it was really remarkably determined run, but Chase Anastasio comes up and makes a terrific block for him. He's the guy right there that kind of, you know, springs that one last guy that had a legitimate shot to get before he got the momentum going. And then Zivikowski just breaks three tackles. Second down. Leinert completes the pass to Smith. If you're going to beat the number one team in the country, you're going to have to win the special teams battle. Notre Dame has done that thus far. Mike Richardson makes a nice play on Smith. It'll set up third down for Leinert and the Trojans. So this, this is a really important down for USC. All the, the momentum is in Charlie Weiss and the Irish's favor. To be a free play. Looked like Notre Dame jumped offside. Liner, savvy, keeps it going and has a receiver. Caught by Steve Smith. He'll be dragged down inside the Irish 40-yard line. It looked like after the penalty marker, some of the Irish secondary members gave up on the play, and Liner took advantage. And you know, what a, what a smart play by Matt Liner. At the very top of the show, one of the three ingredients we said he possesses in abundance was intelligence. Knew he had a free play. Got the ball downfield. Give yourself a chance. Offside. Defense. The nose guard. Penalty is declined. First down. That's referee Jack Wood heading up today's Pac-10 officiating crew. So he's always got to get a free one. Just give yourself a chance. And actually, Zipikowski just a little bit late getting there because he had a chance to make a play on Steve Smith. And yeah, Steve Smith, give me a chance. Throw it up. So heads up play by the Trojans. They have a first down at the 38 yard line. The pass covered 37 yards. Pitch to Bush. Trying to get a block on the corner. No, he's going to throw a pass. And it is incomplete off target intended for Jarrett. Yeah. Ambrose Wood, number 22, the corner, was not fooled. What a smart play by Ambrose Wooden, a guy that's made at least three significant plays for the Irish this year. It's a pass all the way. He just, he just wasn't fooled. Remember, Reggie Bush has thrown for a touchdown in his career. But remember the, the hustle plays Ambrose Wood made against Michigan when he made a tackle on the one-yard line, then recovered a fumble, and then Purdue, and then an interception against Washington in the end zone. Bush. Thrown back by the center of the Irish defense. Corey Mays, the linebacker, cleaning up. I think I saw a flag. There's a flag way yeah. over in front of the SC bench, I believe. Yeah, but for the one run by Reggie Bush, they bottled him up pretty good. But he's the kind of guy that can change the game in, in one play in three different phases. And one of the Irish defenders shaken up. That's Bydash, Brian Bydash, the senior from Milwaukee. Meanwhile, that flag is right over there in front of Pete Carroll. And he's discussing yeah. it with the officials, right? I think they're going to get it on USC for, uh, for motion. 
Really official team. illegal procedure. Illegal formation, offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Third down. Week seven on the line of scrimmage. Pete Carroll's had that string going. Now 27 in a row. He's been the best college football coach over the last three years. Third down and eight. Empty backfield. Five wide receivers. Usually means a quick throw. Liner crossing route complete to Jarrett. Shakes one tackler, then is ridden down short of the 20-yard line as Indukwe, the first to hit him. Gain of 14. Flag down. And a late flag, or actually a flag back in the backfield. Might be a late hit on Liner. Well, he's been taking some shots the last three That's weeks in particular. As I said, you know, you can't play this position at this level at Notre Dame or USA unless you have a tough guy playing quarterback. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 40. Penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. Half the distance, automatic first down. Maurice Crum roughing the passer. The outside linebacker. I think this is Maurice here. On the top of the screen, excuse me. Here he comes here. Played hit the back. We talked about Liner for the last three weeks. He's taken a lot of shots. I think that's the, uh, the 17th hit, actually, he's, last, he's taken the last three games. So the Trojans, after the penalty, get a first down at the Irish 11. Liner, fade route, Jarrett. And Smith, it is Smith, and that is intercepted. Intercepted in Duque. Dan, these corners from Notre Dame have played awfully good this first half. Ambrose Wooden before. I think it was Mike Richardson that time who tipped it, and then Nduque makes the interception. Well, maybe Wooden. It was right in the corner and difficult to see. It That's is Wooden, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we talk about significant plays this year. I think one of the biggest reasons they're 4-1 is because of the way of uh, the, the play of Ambrose Wood. Remember, he wasn't fooled earlier when Reggie Bush would try to throw a halfback pass. Wooden deflects it, and Dukeway picks it off. Leinert intercepted. Irish take over at their own 20. Notre Dame football is brought to you by... Chase. Chase is built around the choices you make. Your choice, your chase. Ambrose Wooden tipping the ball intended for Steve Smith. Picked off by his teammate Chinadum in Duque. Yeah, two, two big plays he's made in this first half. The halfback pass by Reggie Bush and an excellent coverage here. Gets the ball up in the air and then in Duque. You know, the red zone defense by Notre Dame has been sensational. That is the sixth turnover they have created when opponents have gotten inside the 20-yard line. In the last two years, they only had six, but six this season. That's the first Matt Leinart interception against Notre Dame in 82 attempts. Darius Walker hit hard and dropped after a gain of a yard. Well, Frosty Rucker chasing the play down from behind. Rucker's had a big first half. Just under eight minutes to go in the first half. 21-14 Irish. Again, the time of possession significantly in favor of Notre Dame. Over 14 minutes of possession by Notre Dame. Under eight minutes for USA. So Charlie trying to take the air out of the ball. Gets a special teams play. Going all according to plan for him. Fake to Walker. Quinn is sacked. Keith Rivers on the blitz before Quinn ever had a chance to look downfield. Well, Keith, if you talk to Pete Carroll and you ask him about Keith Rivers, the word out of his mouth is fast. Very fast. Absolutely unblocked. And he's too fast not to block. Loss of 11. Puts the ball back at the Notre Dame 10-yard line. And, and here's your Brady Quinn, Tom. You know, you just really got to know the situation. Again, you're, you're still up 21-14. Just don't force anything right here. Oh, 
He raised up as if to pass. Well, they've done that repeatedly this season to Stovall. And the instead, then hands it to Thomas, and they're still scrambling yeah, I think around. The ball I, came out. Pushing and shoving going on. Stovall in the middle of it. It's definitely a fumble, just a matter of who has possession of it. Travis Thomas, who's had a fumbling problem in previous seasons. And it is fourth down. Notre Dame has recovered. Somebody had some strong hands in there in the scrum. Pinkert, number 36, kind of rips it out. Yep. The ball comes out. That's, that's it's a fumble. Again, once again, we say no replay. Pete Carroll off to the visiting team. The visiting team has the option, and he decided a long time ago, I think over the summer, that he didn't want to have replay here on the road at Notre Dame. Well, they still have a conference going. It would be fourth down, forcing D.J. Fitzpatrick to punt from his own end zone. Dick off. Personal foul. Defense number 36. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Oh, wow. What a call. Josh Pinkard, the sophomore from Oxnard, California, called for the personal foul. I saw a lot of people shoving. I didn't see any harm done. The flag goes down, and that puts Notre Dame in business. They'll step it off and give the Irish a first down. Well, for USC, that's about as bad as it gets. Because you backed them up, you force a punt, you're going to get good field position. You know, with a dynamic offense, and then you turn it back over to Brady Quinn. Five penalties, 56 yards against the Trojans, and they've been costly step-offs. They help one Notre Dame touchdown drive. Only one penalty called against the Irish. So spot the ball now at the Notre Dame 25-yard line. First down. We just passed the six and a half minute mark in the first half, and the Irish lead by seven. Yeah, and wouldn't Charlie Weiss just like to take the air out of the ball, get a couple of first downs, going to halftime up by seven. Matt Shelton in motion. Short drop and a draw play. That's a helmet that came off, not the football, as Quinn holds on to it for a short game. Or ahead, I'm happy to report. <laughs> Lua and Rivers. My imagination just seems like more and more football helmets have come flying off of players this year. Even though they have those double chin straps, I think maybe the game is just so much quicker. Here's a, a no huddle offense for the Irish from the shotgun, Brady Quinn. Plenty of time. Finally unloads it to Walker out of the backfield, and Walker dives across the 35. Close to the first down, he has it, yep. a gain of eight. We have two timeouts remaining, this Notre Dame, and a good field goal kicker and D.J. Fitzpatrick. First and 10 on the 36. 36-yard line, first down, Notre Dame from the gun. Quinn. Again, given time, and finally breaks down, but he was able to unload it and complete to Shelton. Shelton makes the catch for a gain of five yards on the play. We get a chance to go back and look at that, you know, the penalty they called on number 36, Josh Pinker. That's 39, Ryan Ting. It wasn't called on him. Stovall in there shoving around. There's... Well, I couldn't, couldn't see it, but that's Pinker, the man that drew the penalty. Brady Quinn trying to thread the needle. I think he did. He did to Matt Shelton. Two catches in a row for Shelton. That one will give the Irish another first down. Yeah, Matt Shelton, probably the fastest receiver. No, he did not. Did not. Did not was not complete. A guy that, remember all the big plays he had down the field a year ago? Averaged over 25 yards a catch. Just starting to get healthy. Has a bad right knee, but seven catches versus Purdue in their last game. And the Irish still without Raymond McKnight. He was injured in the Michigan game. A leg injury still has not been able to return to action. Third down. He got it. Picked it up. Big Brady Quinn lugging the football again. It's been uh, 
That's good game planning. Good tactical weapon for the Irish. It is. Charlie Weiss has seen something. Again, we, as you said, they did it against Purdue a couple of weeks ago, but that's what, the third time they've run a quarterback sneak? Once was on fourth down, but see, there's just not many people that's a one-on-one -on -one block by the, uh, the center, John Sullivan, against the middle linebacker, and Brady Quinn just follows him easily for the first. Do you think uh, Quinn came up and saw that sort of gap and just called it himself, or do you think it was called in the huddle? I think it's called in the huddle. I think it's something they saw over that, you know, the two weeks they had to prepare for, for USC. Notre Dame had a bye week last week, giving them two weeks to prepare for the top-ranked Trojans, who, meanwhile, beat Arizona. Samarja resets in the slot. Quinn in the pocket. Delivers. Oh, that's knocked loose of Fasano with a vicious hit. And Scott Ware, the strong safety. And then, you know, Anthony Fasano is a tough guy, just bounces right up. I'll tell you what, to dislodge this ball from the big Fasano oh, is uh, not easily done, but Scott Ware, the senior from Santa Rosa, yeah. Yeah. What about Fasano backing up? He, he is a new uh, jumping up. He is a New Jersey tough guy. That's one of the things that Charlie Weiss loves about him. <laughs> Charlie Weiss being a New Jersey tough guy himself. Indeed. They break the eye, reset Fasano at tight end on the right of the formation. Quinn fakes the handoff and goes down the sideline. Intended for Stovall. And another flag as they attack John Walker one more time, and it results in an interference penalty again. Well, I, I think a brilliant game plan here by Charlie Weiss, and that's the fourth time they've picked on John Walker. Three of them deep balls. And, and you know, once again, Brady Quinn just gives the ball plenty of air, lets a 6'5 receiver kind of tussle with John Walker, and John Walker just gets tied up. We saw... Maurice Stovall yesterday, we visited with him. He spoke at the luncheon, had his mom and dad with him, and his mom, Mike. Cynthia, told us that uh, she was most proud that he was a gentleman, and he was that. Yeah, indeed. Well, so much for Charlie uh, Weiss taking the air out of the ball. He's got a couple of first downs, and then the pass interference uh, penalty. Plenty of time with 444 and a couple of timeouts. And, and USC still has not solved that. I mean, John Walker still struggles against Maurice Stovall. Boy, that's a, a couple of corners hurt. Really, John Walker's actually the third corner. He started the season as the third corner. 38-yard line, first down Notre Dame. Shelton, brief motion, they hand it to Walker. Darius Walker stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Good defense by the Trojan front. And Oscar Lua coming in to shut it down from his middle linebacker position after the penetration by his defensive lineman. We've talked about how Notre Dame is pretty mentally tough. This USC team is awfully tough, too. They've trailed a couple of times this year. But they've hung no in there, game. hung in there, let their offense kind of overcome some mistakes in the second half in particular. No game for Walker, second down and 10. Flag is down. Walker only got a couple of yards. Keith Rivers not fooled by a sort of counter motion play. Yeah, one of the first, you know, quick hitters we've seen out of Darius Walker. When we talk about his patience, usually they give him the ball and he's going to be holding against the Irish. They give him the ball deep on a draw or a counter or something. That was kind of a little quick hitter, which we haven't seen much from the Irish and Darius Walker. Here's the penalty call. Offense number 50, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay, second down. Dan Santucci, and we remind you that near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game from each team. To honor their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy and American Revolution. Now second down and 20. Well, here's Walker up there against Stovall once again. That's the way Quinn looks. Then he goes across the middle to Walker out of the backfield. And nothing there. Josh Pinkard 
perhaps uh, with a little anger in his step at the moment after that penalty earlier makes the play and it's a loss of or a gain of seven yards but still well short of what they need and it'll bring up third down and very long. Like they had Stovall pretty well blanketed that yeah. time. Yep. Little double coverage with John Walker. Got some help from Scott Ware, the safety. The clock approaching the three minute mark. And Brady Quinn, while having been magnificent numbers, kind of settling in in the second quarter. And they're not huddling up. I, he's going to call a timeout here, I suppose. And he does as they run the uh, game clock down to 2.57 and then take a timeout to discuss this third down and 17 play. We'll take a break with the Irish clinging to a 21-14 lead over the top-ranked Trojans. Hi, everyone. Jimmy Roberts in New York coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show, a visit with Matt Leinart of USC. He talks about his reasons for coming back to school after winning a Heisman and a national championship last year. We'll also, of course, have scores and highlights for you from the top 25, all coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show. Now, back to Tom, Pat, and Lewis in South Bend. All right, Jimmy, with 2.57 left in the first half, the Irish about to attempt a third down and 17. It will be the 12th play of the drive, a drive that was aided by 30 yards and penalties against the Trojans, but uh, doing uh, what most observers thought was necessary to beat the Trojans, keep their high-powered offense on the sideline by playing some ball control. And, of course, the addendum to that, in the words of Charlie White, but you have to score touchdowns. They've taken over five minutes off the clock on this 12-play drive. Well, USC has more penalty yards than rushing yards. Quinn sets his feet, wings it to the end zone for Stovall. Jump ball over the head of everyone. I think Stovall misjudged it as well as he came up. and Well, they went right back into yeah. the well against John Walker again. That time, good coverage by John Walker, former child actor. He actually didn't play high, uh, high school football to his sophomore year because in his acting contract, he couldn't do anything That's that right. might affect his appearance. So Fitzpatrick will kick it to this dangerous returner, Reggie Bush. Fitzpatrick. Did a pretty good job of keeping it away from him. High, fair catch call. Bush takes it, and then he's hit. Well, that was a stupid play. No other way to say it. It was Terrell Lambert. Was it number 20? Yep. yep. Well, one by Everybody, Pinker. Uh, 80,000 people saw the fair catch yep. signal, except one. Well, you know, Rick, Reggie Bush gets the old adrenaline going, doesn't it, yeah. for, for those coverage guys? There'll be some coaching going on there in the sideline, I have this feeling. Yeah, there's clearly the wave. And the hit. So a 36-yard punt, but after the penalty, a net of only 21 yards. And Terrell Lambert said, you know, the, the dog ate my homework, coach. I don't, I don't think it's buying yeah. it. Time of possession staggeringly in favor of Notre Dame. Almost 20 minutes in this first half. It's one way to keep that high-powered office offense off the field. Matt Leinert, first down pass. Man wide open, Bush. Reggie Bush ducks out of bounds, stops the clock as he gains first down yardage to the 37, gain of 13 yards. And, and Tom, national championship teams have to respond. They have to play well on the road. USC has won three games on the road this year, but you, you, you take some body blows, you take some punishment, but you have to find a way to respond, and you've got a Heisman Trophy winner leading your offense right now. And, of course, they've had those great second-half rallies. I mean... They need a first half rally right now. They're not about to panic. Reggie Bush offset in the backfield. And now they send Smith in motion. Flag is down. Liner dumps it to Bush. Bush kind of lost his balance. Staggers out of bounds short of midfield. Chased out by Richardson. Gain of 12 if it stands. But there is a marker. You know, 
It's offsides on, on Notre Dame. See some guys losing some balance. You said that about Reggie Bush. We were out here watching USC Offside practice yesterday. Defense. Penalty declined. First down. And they were kind of laughing about how long the grass was. Prevailing wisdom was it would slow the Trojans down. They didn't buy it. They thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. So it won't bother us. Of USC, first down. Well, Dwayne Jarrett down here has only caught one pass. He is their leading receiver on the year. Smith in motion, resets. Here's Leonard, the lefty, chased from the pocket and sacked. Victor Abiyamiri. Third sack of the season for Victor Abiyamiri. Good. Good early coverage. Chris Fromm had him for a moment and appears to be hurt. He had the first hand on him, and then Abby Amiri got him for sure. Fromm still down. Yeah, that, that's a big sack. You know, they lose, what, nine yards, eight yards? Supposed to be a very, very quick pass. Good coverage prevented it from happening. Fromm is a Californian. From the Valley. A couple of Californians in their defensive line, he and Derek Landry. Went to uh, Hart High School, New Hall, California, all stater there. Captain of the team, also played basketball and shaken up on the play. Clock shows two minutes, 17 seconds. After the loss of seven, it'll set up, set up a second down and 17 for the Trojans. Tell you one thing, if they call a screen, I'll tell you, Brandon Hoyt has read out, read two screens perfectly and prevented some big plays. Matt Leonard just 9 of 14, 147 yards in the first half. Hard guy to get up. <laughs> well, he weighs. Yeah, 270. 270. Well, yeah. he's yeah. going to lead a few cheers. There you go. Played really, really hard this season at defensive end for the Irish. He'll be replaced by Ronald Talley, 6'4", 261, sophomore from Detroit. Well, Fromm got the crowd fired up again. Wind the clock, starting to tick down from 2 minutes, 12 seconds. Second down, 17. Liner changes the play. Tough in this deafening noise. Pumps once. Delivers on the sideline. Caught by McCoy. Knocked out of bounds by Farine. That'll stop the clock. You know, Vimpy, Victor, here's Fromm down here. Up at the top is the screen by Abby Amiri, or the, the sack by Abby Amiri. The number 75 just chasing, chasing. Just gets tangled up. Is he trying to get over Abby Amiri? Yep. Third down and 15. Hand it to Bush. Reggie Bush able to shake tacklers and then blast it out of bounds. On a tough hit by Brandon Hoyt. Well, decision, excuse me, decision time now for, for Pete Carroll. Does he punt it? Looks well, like he only he gained eight yards, yeah. so he'll still, he'll still be well short, about fourth and six. And the punting team, Tom Malone, comes out. So, you know, it, it, it's amazing the confidence they have in Reggie Burt Bush. On third and very long, they still give him the ball behind the line of scrimmage, thinking that he can break enough tackles to pick up a first down. Let your playmaker make a play. Yeah. Zibakowski deep. Malone sends it his way. Sailing punt. Takes a bounce and a great USC hop. He had the uh, back spin on that one, and it'll be down at about the seven-yard line. Great job by Malone, 40-yard punt, but it pins the Irish deep. Tuesday's on NBC, the story of a man named Earl. He's done things he's not proud of, but now he's on a quest to repair everything he's ever done wrong. Find out which bad date he tackles next. The critically acclaimed My Name is Earl, Tuesday at 9, 8 central here on NBC. From lips to the locker room. 
who will be uh, sent in for an X-ray as the Irish take over at their eight. And USC does have two timeouts, so they they stuff a run. Expect the timeout used. They stuffed the run. Here's Travis Thomas thrown for a loss by Lawrence Jackson. Surprised they're not using one now. Did they use it? And here it comes. So a four-yard loss on the play. Timeout SC. Second down and 14. The clock arrested at 127. And the Goodyear Blimps are celebrating their 80th birthday this year. Today, the spirit of Goodyear floats above Notre Dame Stadium, providing our aerial view and reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance tires. What a great day oh, it boy. is. Beautiful. Outstanding atmosphere for maybe the best college football matchup of the season. And the, and the respect I think these two teams have for one another. Tom, we bumped into Joe Montana last night. That just what he was talking about, how they, the teams respect one another. And our first half summary again, what sticks out is that time of possession. The last graphic there, 1939 for Notre Dame. Southern California only 854, and yet the lead is just seven points. Well, Charlie Weiss is a really aggressive play caller. I mean, I'm just, you're just not sure what you're going to get here. Most teams would kind of run it, but with Charlie Weiss, you're just not sure. They will run it. Travis Thomas had his helmet knocked off by Ware and Rivers. Ware has delivered a couple of shots today, hadn't he? Yeah, indeed. You know, one, one on the receiver, Fasano. Yeah. And USC's going to use their last timeout. Yeah, boy. Good tackler, obviously, is number 29, Scott Ware. From Santa Rosa in Montgomery High School. As a wide receiver as well as a defensive back there also ran track and went to Santa Rosa Junior College where he was a junior college All-America before coming to the Trojans. He may just, you know, he may have blown out his chin strap with that hit. You know it's a tough hit when you shred your own chin strap. Travis Thomas doesn't look to be any worse for wear. As the Irish face a third down and five. And the Trojans have spent their final timeout. 115 on the clock. Pressure packed matchup here at Notre Dame Stadium. The 77th meeting between Notre Dame and SC and the Trojans with that gaudy 27 game winning streak. And you know, it really, I, I think it's been, you know, a game well called uh, called by Charlie Weiss because the time of possession. And they just haven't allowed that USC offense to be on the field enough to be as explosive as they have been all year long. And it appeared the uh, defensive coordinator Rick Minter made some adjustments in his defense yeah. in his last few series. Well, 49 offensive plays for Notre Dame and 26 for USC. Three tight ends in this formation. They're going to try to pound it. Travis Thomas trying to break to the outside. Cuts back. Didn't get it. And he really doubled up the number of plays. They'll take the clock down inside a minute. And you know, ordinarily you'd say, hey, let's let's go try to block this punt, change the momentum. But when you have a returner like Reggie Bush down there, I, I think you give him a chance. Just like you give the playmakers a chance, give Reggie Bush a chance. Well, SC's gonna get great field position, one would assume. And Quinn is gonna let it tick down as far as he can and then call the final Irish timeout He's before they punt. Seven more ticks to go. So 29 seconds left on the clock as the Irish will send DJ Fitzpatrick out for a uh, pressure punt here. That's just the thing about this USC team. You can never catch your breath. You can never relax. Just when you think you may have them on the ropes a little bit, you got to punt to that guy. And Bush will be uh, standing in Irish territory to receive the punt. As we remind you, it'll be the Lexus halftime show coming up. Jimmy Roberts back in our New York studios. You'll have all the 
latest news, scores, and highlights from the world of college football. And also, uh, we'll have the conversation between uh, Pat Hayden and USC quarterback Matt Leinert. And Charlie Weiss will give us a tour of the new Guglielmino Athletics Complex. All of that coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show. You know, when I was talking to Matt Leinert this week, it was a Wednesday, and he was anxious to get the interview over because every Wednesday he goes out to lunch with his dad, Bob, just off campus, and they've been doing it every single week except once when they played against Cal and lost two years ago. He's like a, a rock star in celebrity-driven Los Angeles. Fitzpatrick from his own end zone. Reggie Bush standing right around midfield. Fitzpatrick to Bush at his own 48. Dodging one man, darting to the outside. Reversing his field. This could be dangerous, and he's finally trapped and taken down. Or is he? Still on his feet. I don't know. There he is. Wow, you get a glimpse of how dangerous Reggie Bush can be and how elusive. The punt covered 40 yards, and then as he twisted and turned up field, he lost 13 on the return, and Lambert finally latched on to him. Yeah, and that's what you give up. You know, you, you, you're happy that you know, occasionally you're going to lose some yards with this guy. He did lose 13 yards, but he's got, you know, a touchdown possibility was, on every touch. It was that close to, to going, breaking it to the outside, wasn't he? I mean, yeah, I, he had, I thought if he just kept going here. He had Zibikowski yeah. number nine there, the only man that was on this side, but before Lambert got in to stop him. Nine seconds left. And look who's on defense way in center field. Jeff Zamarza is playing defense way, way back on the 10-yard line. Not even in your picture. And so, handed to Lendale White, and he chugs ahead to bring the first half to a close. So the Irish in their matchup with top-ranked USC will leave the field in front. Let's go to Lewis with Charlie Weiss. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, Coach, the, the key to this first half seems to be time of possession. You're winning that big time. How do you coach your guys up here in the halftime? Well, we, we know that they've been a great second-half team. Right. So we have to make sure we do. We play the second half the way we played the first half. We withstood their early blows, and here we are. we got a chance right now. All right, Coach, thank you. Tom? All right, Lewis, SC has indeed been potent in the second half. They trail by seven. Now time for the Lexus halftime show. Let's go to New York and join Jimmy Roberts in our studios. Well, thanks, Tom. Coming up on the Lexus halftime show, we'll hear more from USC quarterback Matt Leinart. He talks about his reasons for returning after winning the Heisman Trophy last year. We'll also update you on the college football scoreboard. It was supposed to be a no contest for undefeated Alabama today. It wasn't quite the way it turned out. We'll get to all of that right after these messages from your local station. Welcome to the Lexus Halftime Show. Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. And hi, everyone. Jimmy Roberts in New York with the Lexus Halftime Show. Top-ranked USC trailing Notre Dame 21-14. But before Irish fans get too confident, consider this. The Trojans have trailed at the half twice this year so far to Oregon and to Arizona State. In both of those games, you may remember, SC outscored the opposition by a combined 70-7 to win in both occasions. Food for thought as we get ready for the second half. Let's get you caught up on games elsewhere in the top 25. Starting with the team ranked right behind USC, number two, Texas. The Longhorns hosting number 24, Colorado, in Austin right now. And Vince Young making quite a statement for the Heisman Trophy. As you can see, the Horns up 35 to 10. Young with three touchdowns running, one passing. How about these numbers? 16 of 18, 258 yards passing. Seven rushes for 48 yards. Alabama and Ole Miss, third quarter. Ole Miss leading 7-3. Bama running back Ken Darby takes the handoff. 48 yards later, the Crimson tied up 10-7. Three seconds left in the game now. Alabama kicker Jamie Christensen with the game-winning 31-yard field goal. The tide win it in a squeaker. 13-10, Alabama's defense entered the game ranked sixth nationally. Likely didn't hurt themselves too much here. SEC's leading rusher Darby goes for 100 yards, 70 of those in the second half. It was homecoming at Temple, and somebody might want to talk to the scheduling committee. Miami in town, second play of the game. Kyle Wright, the swing pass to Sonoris Moss, who goes 92 yards for the touchdown. 
Believe it or not, they missed the extra point. Didn't really matter. Hurricanes roll in this one. Kyle Wright barely breaks a sweat. 9 of 10, 198 yards, and four touchdowns all in the first half. Miami hasn't lost in this series since 1930. In progress, Penn State and Michigan. Michigan up 10 0. Uh, the only score is a Garrett Rivas field goal in the first half, and Michael Hart with a two yard touchdown in the opening drive of the second half. Also in progress, Florida and LSU. Jamarcus Russell, a pair of touchdown passes for LSU. Florida has the number one ranked passing game in the SEC, but a tough half for them. Five of 18 and 34 yards for Chris Leak so far in this one. Wake Forest in BC late in the fourth. Quentin Porter out, Matt Ryan in, and getting it done. 26 yard touchdown pass to Kevin Challenger. BC wins it 35 to 30. What a day for Ryan. Two touchdowns in the last two and a half minutes. BC with the nice comeback from nine, uh, nine points down. Michigan State and Ohio State. End of the first half, Spartans lining up for the field goal, but the kick is blocked. Ashton Yabuti scoops up the loose ball, goes the distance for the score. Buckeyes trailed 17 to 14 at intermission. Third quarter now, Spartans' Jason T takes the handoff, dances around up the middle, Michigan State with the score 24 to 21. They take the lead Ohio State quarterback Troy Smith looking and finding Santonio Holmes 46 yards gives the Buckeyes the lead for good. It was 28 to 24 at that point. Ohio State goes on to win this one 35 to 24. So after the two early losses the Buckeyes with an important win today. They've now won 25 of their last 27 at the horseshoe and we stay in the Big Ten wild game here. Uh, both Lawrence Maroney and Gary Russell with career high rushing days, but the Badgers win. Down three with 38 seconds to go. They block a punt. It's recovered in the end zone for the game winner. Following today's game, log on to NBCSports.com. Click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, for in depth coverage of USC and Notre Dame. Plus, check out analysis and commentary from Pat Haight. It's all at NBCSports.com. Com. And following USC and Notre Dame, we'll bring you NASCAR under the lights, primetime racing from Charlotte, North Carolina. And here with a quick preview, we go live to Bill Weber. Bill? Well, it is halftime. Notre Dame with an inspired first half, leading top-ranked USC 21-14. to 14. And, you know, after Matt Leinart won the Heisman Trophy last year, many wondered if he would take off for the riches of the National Football League. But he had other ideas, and he shared some of them with another man who once called signals for SC, our Pat Hayden. I've had the most fun being at SC my last four years than I ever had. Furthermore, I've uh, announced I will be coming back for my fifth year. You made this, um, some people think, unusual decision of coming back for your, for your last year. Uh, what went in that decision? Um, there, there's a lot of things, you know. I, I, First and foremost, I wanted to look out for my family, and, and then the normal person probably said, well, then why don't you go so you can make some money, take care of your family, but, um, you know, my family and I are very close, and um, that was a big part of it. Plus, I felt like I could go to the NFL and probably do okay, you know, maybe get drafted high, who knows, but I just wanted to be sure, you know, and also another year of experience, being a kid, being in college right here, it's an awesome place, you know, I got tons of friends that I developed over the last four years that I'll have with me forever, and just being here, with all the you know the glory glory days back at SC, it's a great a great time to be here. You're pretty much finished up ac academically. You're, you're, uh, you, that experience is pretty much finished with you. But w what is your academic life like now on this campus, Matt? Oh, it's, a, it's really lack of an academic life. You know, I, I'm taking one class, which is a dancing class, which everyone, the whole world knows already. You know, I'm not on campus too often, just because uh, I'm on campus to watch film, to to work out, kind of be with the guys, but. I don't really find myself walking around too much because uh, it kind of gets hectic around here sometimes. And the winner is Matt Leinhardt from the University of Southern California. Can a Heisman Trophy winner be an average college kid? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to be an average college kid, you know. I think uh, it's definitely flattering. You know, I've received a lot of attention over the last few years, and you definitely kind of get treated differently. There's a more tension on you, and sometimes I think you lose track of that football is supposed to be fun. You know, you with all the media, with all the pressure and all the expectations, especially that we have on ourselves, sometimes you kind of lose focus of, of what's really the point is to have fun playing this sport. You know, it's a great sport to play. Well, many people think that uh, Leinart's toughest competition for the Heisman this year just might come from his own teammate, Reggie Bush. Remember, 
Only one man has ever won two Heisman trophies, of course, that was Archie Griffin for Ohio State back in 1974 and 75. Well, a short distance from where Leinart is right now sits a brand new building on the Notre Dame campus, the Guglielmino Athletics Complex. Completed just this summer, the building was officially dedicated in a ceremony yesterday. It's named after Don Guglielmino, who played football for Notre Dame during his freshman year of 1939. Only played for one season. His father's death and the beginning of the war sent him back home to California, he enlisted in the Army, and never did make his way back to Notre Dame, instead graduating from Stanford. But he always wanted to give back to Notre Dame, and this building has become his legacy. His bequest of $16 million took care of most of the cost. We get a closer look at the facility now, a guided tour by none other than Charlie Weiss. <laughs> All right, you get a beautiful view of my deck as it overlooks the football fields. You come over here, walk right outside. Over there to the left is the defensive field where you see those goal posts. Obviously, it's a short walk from here over to the stadium. So uh, it's become a very convenient thing for our players. And you get a great scenery from here all the way over to Touchdown Jesus. This is the player's haven. Oh, this is their locker room. Six flat screen TVs, all with video games to kill some time, you know, connected to everything they do. But because it's so nice, we very seldom have players wanting to leave here. They like hanging out here. Other than the locker room, this is the players' favorite area because this is their lounge. No one else is allowed. Players only where they can use their flat screen TVs or play video games when they're killing some time. This is our team meeting room. Uh, we'll, uh, all our team functions start here. It's 150 seats. The biggest problem I have is to make sure they don't fall asleep in these comfortable seats. This is our recruiting lounge, and it gives us a venue for when we have uh, prospects and their families to come in here, to come and spend a little time. And it really has the best view on campus because back behind us over here, we have both the administration building and the infamous Golden Dome. Here's where all our work is done here in the weight room. And the best part about this, this is obviously brand new. We also have a turf room and an indoor track that we utilize as well. And this is our indoor, which is connected to the Google Amino Center. So we kind of have a one, one building does all. Every school has their own history, and this, this area really symbolizes the history of Notre Dame, from Newt Rockney to the Four Horsemen. It really is what Notre Dame football was all about, and hopefully we'll make some history of our own. Quite a place. And there is the Goog, as they call it, right in the heart of the Notre Dame campus. Beautiful day like today. Certainly not hard to understand what might motivate a man to such levels of dedication. The Irish leading 21 to 14 will send it back to South Bend right after these messages from the local station. This has been the Lexus Halftime Show. Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. Traditional touching of the sign, play like a champion today as the green jerseyed Notre Dame Irish make their reappearance for the second half. We are at halftime at Notre Dame Stadium, 21-14, Notre Dame leading top-ranked Southern California. And uh, as we get ready for the third quarter, we're reminded that USC has outscored its opponents 91-21 to in the third quarter of their games this season. Pat, it's time for our uh, Charles Schwab conversation. Well, you know, there's a couple things I think if you, you like the way this game's going, there's a few things that strategies for the second half. Notre Dame, for them, just continue to control the ball. They've controlled it all. 
almost 21 minutes in the first half. I think USC needs to get to all their playmakers, but they got to get on the field before they can do that, right? But right. give Lindale White a few more chances. And then USC's had six penalties. They have 71 yards in penalties, only 70 yards rushing. So that then that Josh Pinkard penalty really hurt them. Well, you know, ball control is one thing, but it was also Notre Dame, it seems to me, that made the big plays in the first half. Well, and they did it in all three phases. I don't know if you remember, they were down seven to nothing. And I think perhaps that first drive, when they had a fourth and one in their own territory, Charlie Weiss goes for it. Brady Quinn gets the, uh, the, the first down on a quarterback sneak. That leads to Travis Thomas' 16-yard touchdown run to even the game. And then I think the biggest play of the game is his punt return by Tom Zivikowski, 60 yards. Again, this is a guy that, you know, generally they, they put a back there just because of his good hands, but an absolutely determined run to put the Irish, you know, tied at 14. And then the defensive play by Ambrose Wooden tips it to a Duke way. So you saw an offensive play. You saw a special teams play. You, you know, you got, saw a good defensive play. That's how you beat a number one ranked team. How many times do you think Charlie Weiss reminded his team about the prowess in the second half of the Trojans? Well, particularly against this team, USC over the last three years has outscored them 68 to nothing. So I'm sure he's reminded them. And we're getting set for the third quarter. Before we do, let's go down to the field where Lewis Johnson has Pete Carroll. All right, thanks, Don. Pete, a lot of topics to discuss there in the locker room. Time of possession, penalties, turnovers, special yeah. teams. Where did you start? What did you talk the most about? Yeah, we, we just need to go back to work. It's second half time now. Now we got to go to work, do things right. You know, we gave him a lot of stuff there. You know, we gave him 30 yards on one drive and a punt return. Uh, we, we, our offense hadn't had the ball enough, you know. So we got we got to do our stuff. Primarily, we got to stop him on third down on defense to get the ball back to the offense. We'll see what we're made of. We'll see if we can come back out here and execute like we've been. We're kind of counting on it. All right, Pete, thank you. Tom? All right, it sets up as a great second half. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium for the start of the third quarter in just a moment. Touchdown Jesus just over the walls of the Notre Dame Stadium, familiar landmark of the Hesburgh Library here at the University of Notre Dame. And the Irish leading Southern California at halftime for the first time since 2000. They're up 21-14 as we get set to start the third quarter of play. Well, they hogged the football 70% of the time in the first half. Ah, but SC has outscored Notre Dame 68 nothing in the second half the last three years. And I assure you, Shirley Weiss has told his uh, green-cladded green Irish team that, hey, this is a pretty good second-half team we're playing. Reggie Bush awaits the kickoff to start the second half. DJ Fitzpatrick. Bush says, I'll take it. Does it the goal line. Nowhere to go. Broke the tackle and then taken down at the 10 yard line. Mike Richardson on special teams makes a big play for Notre Dame. As we take a look at our serious first half stats. You know, USC actually has, you know, 218 yards, but they've only had 27 plays. So when they've had the ball, they've actually done pretty, pretty doggone well. But we keep mentioning how well Notre Dame has kind of hogged the football. And won the ball pretty well. 83 yards against this USC defense in the first half is pretty doggone good. Trojans start from their 10. Ronald Talley is in a defensive end, replacing the injured Chris Fong. Lendale White. Three yards on first down. Well, that's been part of the formula in the second half is giving Lindell White some, some opportunities. You know, he's such a physical presence, and you have the perimeter game, of course, of Reggie Bush. You have that, you know, high-powered offensive game. But once in a while, you need to pound it, and Lindell White is your pounder. Leinert dropped by McCoy. Well, that's two perfect throws that Matt Leinert has thrown today that have been dropped. That one by McFoy, earlier by Steve Smith. And now third down. Leinert had hit eight of his last nine before that drop by McFoy. Third down and six. Liner chase from the pocket, unloads it, 
I don't know if they rule that a catch or not. McFoy made a one-hand stab at it. Do they rule it a catch? Yes, they do. Yeah, I'm not sure he made the first down, though. Good catch by Chris McFoy. And as you see, just short of that yellow line. It'll be fourth down in less than a yard. In this same situation, Charlie Weiss went for it. There's the catch. It is a good catch. Hands under the ball. And here comes the punt team. The kind of respect that Pete Carroll has for that front four of Notre Dame. So good opening defensive series. It's not, you don't see too many three and outs for this USC team, particularly after halftime. Whistles blow before Malone can punt. Prior to the snap, timeout. USC, their first charge time out of the half. Boy, those are precious, precious things. Those timeouts in close ball games, you know, Tom? They must have been lacking a player as they have to spend their first of three timeouts to get the proper alignment on the field. We'll take a break. Punt coming up. Back at Notre Dame, fourth down for Southern California, and Pete Carroll changed his mind in the timeout and sent his offense back out on the field. And, unless he's just trying to draw him off sides. And, and Charlie Weiss brought his defense over the sideline and said, whatever you do, watch that ball. Fourth down, less than a yard to go. The ball resting at the 19 of the Trojans. Quick snap. They'll have to untangle them. It'll be close. And if you use that yellow line as the guide, it's right in the middle of it. It is first down, USC. I'm surprised they actually didn't measure. I mean, it looked a lot closer to, to me, too. Yeah. Well, Charlie Weiss kind of rolled the dice in the first half. He went for the fourth down in his own territory. Pete Carroll returns the favor. And on that drive, Notre Dame scored a touchdown. Let's see if the Trojans can as well. A wry smile from Pete Carroll after he goes for it and picks up the first. Lindale White. Lindale White. Ronald Talley replacing from an offensive end gets his first tackle of the game. Well, USC and a quarterback sneak just like Brady Quinn. Boy, I tell you, Notre Dame had three defensive tackles over the center. The center. That was not a great formation to be able to convert on the first down, but the power of Matt Liner, big guy, 6'5", 225 pounds, got the ball over the first down marker. Second down, seven. Leinert has a man behind the defense, and it's caught by Smith. Steve Smith was behind Tom Zibikowski, and then Mike Richardson comes up to make the tackle, but a gain of 40 yards. Yeah, they, they can do that. You know, you get, you know, three inches on third down or fourth down, and then you come right back and throw the ball downfield. They can get yardage in big, big chunks. Now, although this is a nice play, this can be a touchdown if he gets the ball out in front of him. See, he had to slow down and actually turn. If he gets the ball out in front of him where he's running away, I think he scores down the sideline. As it is, it puts the ball at the 37 of Notre Dame. First down, Trojans. Leinert, first down pass. Double pumps. Picked off. Intercepted. Mike Richardson. Picks off the liner pass. It looked like a miscommunication between the quarterback and receiver. Trying to get to the fullback. I think it was Hand Hancock on that wheel route down the sideline. And Mike Richardson stayed right at home. He expected, Matt Leinert expected this to be wide open. I don't think he ever saw Mike Richardson. Good disguise coverage by the boundary corner, Mike Richardson. And it's a second interception on the day of Matt Leinard, who came into the game with just three. First time he's thrown multiple interceptions in 20 games. <laughs> Notre Dame football is brought to you by Chevy. The new Chevrolet is an American revolution. By Sirius Satellite Radio. It's more than just radio. And by Charles Schwab. Investing? Talk to someone who actually listens. Talk to Chuck. Charles Schwab, 1-800-4-SCHWAB. 
from Notre Dame Stadium. 21 14, 11 55. Notre Dame has just intercepted Matt Leinert. Mike Richardson doing the honors. Yes. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson here for a match between the ninth ranked Irish and the top rated Trojans who have won 27 in a row. Play action fake. Quinn on first down has time. Sideline route. Samarja. And it falls incomplete. He was well, defended four, by Walker. Yeah, fourth deep pass against Walker. So go back and look at that interception again and watch Mike Richardson. It really is kind of lined up kind of a, almost like an outside linebacker. And then Matt Liner just doesn't even see him. The fullback is on this wheel route right here. And then Mike Richardson just, just steps right in front of the wheel. Perfect coverage and a good read by Richardson. Mike Richardson, the senior from Warner Robins, Georgia, with his second interception of the season. He had one against Purdue in their last game. Second down and 10. Pitch to Walker. Darius Walker trying to string it out and get some room on the sideline. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, USC's run defense has been pretty good. The, the Irish have only averaged 1.4 yards on first down uh, when they came into this game, as we said, being really efficient on first down. One of the hallmarks of the first five games. Yeah, they've had more third downs in this game than uh, right. we can remember. But, you know, they've converted. They've played very, very opportunistic special teams, and that's been the difference. Third down and nine. Blitz. Quinn sacked. Cedric Ellis got him for a loss of six. Good coverage caused that one because Brady Quinn had good protection early in that pass route. You watch Ellis number 49 just kind of, you know, see the outside blitz by number 39, Ryan Ting. One of those safety blitzes, and then, and then Brady Quinn had to step up into the on rush of Cedric Ellis. Fitzpatrick on to punt. So they got a good job against Reggie Bush, haven't they? The minute you say that. <laughs> Here's Bush to make a move to the outside. Another dance to the sideline. One man to beat, and he's pushed out of bounds to save what could have been a touchdown. Zipikowski, who pushed him out, saved it perhaps a touchdown. As it was, a 20-yard return of a 38-yard punt. Good field position for the Trojans. In the background, the Golden Dome of the Administration Building. In the foreground, the house that Rockne built as Notre Dame leads USC. For 80 years, one of America's most recognizable images, the Goodyear blimp floating overhead with these aerial views, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance tires. You know, Tom, I think this is a frustrated offensive team. This is a team that's usually incredibly efficient. And they came in, you know, thinking they were going to score quickly. But Notre Dame has been really tough on them. Lendell White reversing field. Leinert gives him a block. And White manages to get five yards out of it before Corey Mays drags him down when it looked like it could be a loss on the play. And that's, uh, that's why Matt like Leinert a little uh, slow getting up. That's why you don't want your quarterback yeah. to block. Yeah, Is that you, what you're going to yeah, say? Exactly. Well, you're, you don't want your Heisman Trophy winner to block like that. So... Starting with a first down at midfield, the Trojans get five yards on a first down run by Lindale White. There's Leinert out in front. I don't think it was the block. I think he just got felt on uh, yeah. felt on but White stepped on him. Yep, Lindale White. Second down, five. Reggie Bush finds a hole and bursts through it. Reggie Bush gone. Touchdown, Zivikowski got him in the end zone, but as he slowed down, but he was across the goal line for a 45-yard touchdown run. The hole opened up, and he was through it in a heartbeat. Well, that's the 70, what, third play in his career was over 20 yards. Good blocking on the left side. Fred Davis, number 83, just kind of sealed his block inside and allowed Reggie. Reggie was slowed up a little too soon. Mm -hmm. Remember the Super Bowl in Buffalo? And I got that feeling. Two touchdown runs for Bush today, 36 yards and 45 yards. And now Danello to tie the game. Up and good. Well, 
question is Matt Miner looks, you know, a bit shaken up on that one block. But remember the, the fourth and goal in their own territory, just like Notre Dame did in the first quarter. Notre uh, USC does it in the third. It results in a touchdown. And the incomparable Reggie Bush. 194 all-purpose yards per game. Lightning strikes. We're tied at 21. Well, usually behind every great run, there's a pretty good offensive line block. Watch Fred Matua as he pulls and clears the way for Reggie Bush. And then there's a block there, a second block, a third, and a fourth that allows him to get through. Usually you just only need one or two blocks, but he had four good blocks there, allows Reggie Bush to get the end zone. And, you know, I, I saw Matt Leiner kind of shaking up on the sideline, and, and John uh, David Booty was warming up. The backup quarterback. There's Booty. Leiner got hurt on that block. So the kickoff by Van Barkham. And this will be Grimes at about the four-yard line. Grimes pushing a blocker out of the way, takes it to the 25-yard line. First down for the Irish. Special teams tackled by Alex Gomez as we go down for an injury report with Lewis. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. You can see Matt Leiner here sitting on the bench. A few moments ago, he took some medical attention. The trainers around him talking to him. They wiped his face off, took something, I'm assuming, for pain. And as he was doing that, uh, John David Booty warmed up. And right now, he looks to be rather solemn and quiet. Had some conversation with his offensive coordinator, so we'll see what happens. Tom? All right, Lewis, for now, it's the Irish offense on the field as Brady Quinn lines up from the shotgun. First down at his own 25. Pass caught by Shamar Samarja. Turned him around, but he's able to latch on to it, and then Walker holds him to a gain of about five or six yards. Well, that's, that's not allowed in many parts of Utah. The game is set. I think it's second and three. You know, Matt Leiner kind of came off off the turf a couple of weeks ago against Arizona State when he took that shot and responded. But he does not look like he's coming back in the game time. Samarja will gain a seven on the pass from Quinn on first down, second down and three. <laughs> Thomas, Travis Thomas. Pushed the pile ahead for maybe a yard, not much more. Ramsey with a tackle for the Trojans. We have Notre Dame now in a third down. That about two. They're trying to lead cheers here at Notre Dame Stadium. Well, they've got a good crowd. Looks like maybe eight or 9,000 USC fans clad in red across the way. Third down and two. Walker is the running back. Four wide receivers. Brady Quinn raises up, does not throw. Instead, hauls it down and runs for the first. You, you, just, uh, you, you see in the maturation of Brady Quinn, how much better is he playing this year than he did a year ago? I mean, he just did not force that. It was supposed to be a quick out. It was taken away. Knows only, only needs two yards. And he, he's just so strong, too. And found, you know, trailed in right behind Darius Walker. Just kind of managing the game. Know the, knows the, the clock, the score, the situation. And the pump fake sort of froze the defenders, too, to give him an extra couple of yards. First down at the 39. First down pass. Again, off target to turn Carlson around. He did that uh, to Samarja a moment ago, and Jeff caught it. Yeah. Carlson unable to. It's at least second down and 10. John Carlson, a guy that, that Charlie Weiss is really high in. He's one of their tight ends. You know, 6'6", 255 pounds, former basketball player here at Notre Dame as well. Now, yeah, Leinert's back up now. Shotgun. Quinn sends Stovall in motion. Hand it to Walker. Trying to get a block. Nothing doing. 
Loss on the play, a big loss on the play. About three or four yards. Yeah, number 59, Colin Ashton. Or excuse me, it was 39, wasn't it? It's Colin Ashton, number 59, the, the direct snap right to Darius Walker. And number 59 is the middle linebacker who was blitzing and just keeps hustling, keeps hustling, and gets some help from Brian Ting as well. Colin Ashton's a guy, he's a fifth generation USC student and has never ever in his entire life missed a USC home game. Was a ball boy for the uh, basketball Trojans. Never missed a home game. Third down and 12. Brady Quinn, plenty of time. Cross the middle, strike. Caught by Samarja, Mr. Clutch. Gain of 15 and an Irish first down. Yeah, and you know, one of the hardest things to do in the pocket is just to wait and wait and wait for that wide receiver to come open. But watch the patience of Brady Quinn. He knows he's got good protection, just ducks the rush of Cedric Ellis, the right arm, and then Samarja just waiting. That little inside route. And you know, when Brady Quinn unloads it, it's like, you know, Zeus throwing lightning bolts. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of steam on that thing. He is a strong young man, and there's the shark. Samarja, who has emerged into stardom this season. Travis Thomas. SC is pretty much running, uh, shutting down the running game yeah. of late. Keith Rivers, first to hit him. Yeah, but you know, for, for Charlie Weiss, I mean, this is just valuable time keeping the ball away from USC's offense. Again, they've run 60 plays. As Charlie Weiss now has run 60 plays to just the 36 for USC. So out of 36 plays, USC scored three times. That's the reason he's trying to keep it away from them. Quinn surveys the defense on second down. That'll be a five-yard step off against Notre Dame. Dan Stevenson coming up out of his stance. Dead ball. False start. Offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. And one of the keys we said at halftime is this Charlie Weiss's team to kind of continue to hog the football. And, uh, you know, they have almost coming up on five minutes this second half. And Pete Carroll saying to Lewis Johnson, hey, we've got to play better third down defense. Give our offense a few more chances. Notre Dame has rushed 25 times for 72 yards. That's less than three yards a carry. It's second down and 14. Quinn has a man wide right open, and it's Cassano who lost the football. And it's picked up by SC. Keith Rivers. Rivers grabs it. And then is tackled at about the four-yard line. Darnell Bing was the man that knocked it from the grasp of Anthony Fasano. It went scooting downfield. But, but watch number 20, Darnell Bing. He knows he doesn't see him. The receiver doesn't see him. So he's going to come up from behind him and give it to little Tomahawk Chop. That's a heads-up play by Darnell Bing, and for the second time, Keith Rivers, who had an interception in the first half, recovers a, a, a turnover. So really smart play and a hustling play by Darnell Bing. Turn it over to the Trojans. Tie game following the turnover. SC takes over at its own six, and Matt Leinert is back on the field for the Trojans. For the second time in four games, he's taken a shot and come back and responded. There's what's happened to him today. Ball at the six. Now this is an area I don't think he ought to be audibleizing. Just get the ball snapped. It's just too loud down there. Reggie Bush breaking free. Almost had it just tripped up. You know, there's that really that sense of anticipation every time. You know, you, you, you can just gather your voice. You, every time Reggie Bush touches the ball, there's Fasano who caught that long pass, and then Darryl, uh, Darnell Bing, number 20, who was beaten but comes up from behind on a hustle play and forces a turnover. Smart play by Bing. And, and there it is. Just knew that Fasano didn't see him. Second down, Zivikowski saved a touchdown on that run by Bush a play ago. So Lendale White will try his turn. And like a battering ram, he hits the line and then is thrown back by Ndukwe and others. Ronald Talley got a piece of it. 
Okay, one, one thing about uh, Lendale White, he is just a very, very disciplined kind of runner. I mean, Reggie Bush, you don't know what you're going to get. It's kind of a grab bag of runs, but with Lendale White, he is an absolute, absolute disciplined runner. Held to only 25 yards by the Irish defense. It's third down and one. Kurtman, the fullback, Bush, the tailback, gets the handoff, bounces to the outside, spun down, but he has the first down. Corey Mays able to spin him to the turf, but not until Bush. And the play, I think, Pat, was supposed to go up the middle. He just bounced to the outside and got the easy first down. If you're an offensive lineman, you just kind of keep blocking, you know? Uh, we were talking to Sam Baker this week and talking about the differences between blocking for Lendell White and Reggie Bush. He says, you know, with Lendell White, you know, you, you look up and he's still chugging. You think the play's over. But with Reggie Bush, you never see his plays. They happen so fast. There's big Sam Baker, his dad, David Baker, the commissioner of the Arena Football League. Fake to White. Leinert steps up across the middle through the arms of Jarrett and incomplete. Yeah, that's three drops. That, that's a, a ball generally Dwayne Jarrett, who in his year and a half has had a really remarkable start to his career. A little square in. Good throw by Leinert. Very catchable, a little bit low, but very catchable. But caught 90 passes in his first year and a half. He had disappointed Leinert. And Dwayne Jarrett was only 17 years old when they won the uh, the AP National Championship last year. Really a young player, but emerging. Nine touchdown catches on the year. He's right down here. White, thrown for a loss. Derek Landry getting penetration to stop him for a loss of four. Now Derek Landry gets penetration versus most offensive lines. He is so quick off the ball. Very, very active, and the other thing about Derek Landry, he just doesn't get knocked off his feet much. Third down and 14. Lindell White on the sideline as the Irish come with their nickel defense. Five defensive backs. Minert steps up to the sideline, man open, but incomplete the pass off target intended for Jarrett. Yeah, if he throws that ball, what, up the sideline some rather than over the middle, maybe Jarrett makes the catch. Good defensive series after the turnover. You know, that sudden change defense, good defensive series for the Irish. Good protection here for Matt Leinard. See, you see, Jarrett was actually blowing right by yeah. Tom Zivikowski. The ball just under the throne. Malone puts Zivikowski. Will let it bounce. It takes a good SC bounce. It'll be down at the 46-yard line, 40-yard punt with no return. Coming up tonight, don't miss NASCAR's best under the lights in prime time for Nextel Cup Racing from Lowe's Motor Speedway, presented by the Principal Financial Group. Nextel Cup Racing, presented by the Principal Financial Group tonight at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, beginning with the Bank of America countdown to green. Only six races to go in the chase for the Cup. Irish first down at their own 46. Tie game. Darius Walker found a seam. Closed in a hurry. He did manage to get four yards to midfield. A good tackle by Darnell Bing again. Darnell Bing's having a heck of a game. Caused a fumble a while ago. Talked to Darnell Bing this week, and he was saying to us that he, his mother, Michelle, calls him every single day just to make sure he's doing his homework. <laughs> All-American at Long Beach Poly. Wearing number 28, he had to get the, the athletic director, Mike Garrett's permission. The number was retired. Or number 20, I should say. Right. Darius Walker. Good tackle by Oscar Lua, number 45, the middle linebacker for USC. And that position was a question mark for Pete Carroll when the season started. Boy, since the very first week, Oscar Lua has been a good player. Particularly, see him number 45, shirt tackler in the opening field of Darius Walker. 
particularly good in short yardage. Take them out now on, in nickel, and they bring in Josh Pinkert, who plays the middle linebacker along with Colin Ashton. Third down and four. Nickel defense. Grimes is in at a receiver spot. Stole ball, Samarja, and Shelton. Quinn's pass. Good hands. Stovall hangs on for a first down. Yeah, Maurice Stovall has really learned how to use his body this year. You know, career high, 23 catches coming in, into today's ball game. And, and just really, you know, a guy who's 6'5", just kind of screened the defensive back and, gave, and turned into the quarterback and gave Brady Quinn a big target. It's kind of, you know, guys like that extend the strike zone for quarterbacks. When you're 6'5", he's 6'5", Jeff Samarzo 6'5". Makes it a little bit easier on QBs. First down, Trojan 43. Quinn, Fasano! Anthony Fasano to the 22-yard line. Justin Wyatt stopped him after a gain of 21 yards. He held on to the ball that time. Good quick read by Brady Quinn. Saw and felt the blitz. Two linebackers inside. What does that leave? Tight end wide open. Anthony Fasano saw the same thing. So when the tight end sees the blitz, the quarterback sees the blitz, you see the same thing, you have the chance for a big play. Third reception of the game for the big tight end from Verona, New Jersey. Shelton in motion. Quinn from the shotgun. All day. Now he's going to have to tuck it under. Good coverage for the Trojans. And Quinn out of bounds. In pursuit was Keith Rivers. Slight gain on the play, three or four yards. Well, he, you know, he, he has had over 100 yards rushing. He was 123 yards rushing coming in today, uh, today's game. I mean, much more so than his first two years combined. Just kind of a, a savvy guy. It's not forcing the ball. You know, he only thrown three interceptions on the year, thrown 13 touchdowns. And if you can have a two-to-one touchdown interception ratio, that's pretty good. His is four to one. Charlie Weiss, known for his multiple formations, comes with three tight ends now on second down and about five. Fasano went up and lined up at fullback. Now resets tight end to the left. The other one, Carlson, in motion as they pitch to Thomas. Thomas got a block and cut back when he probably should have kept angling to the outside where his blockers were. Yeah, that's one of those things, just kind of staying with the blocks. You, know, you just saw a flash of an opening back inside, try to cut it back to it, but you're right, if it's a little bit more patient and kind of follows Ryan Harris. Hey, look at the big the big hole right there. Right, yeah. see, and then instead he cut back, yep. and Ramsey was waiting for him. Brady Quinn has hit his last four passes. It's third down and three. And third quarter might come to a close here before they run a play. It will. Harris facing a big third down when the fourth quarter begins at the 14-yard line of Leonard and the Trojans. It's living up to expectations. It is worthy of the great glories of the past in this greatest intersectional rivalry in American college football. The USC Trojans, national champions, ranked number one, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, back for the fourth quarter after these messages from your local NBC station. The traditional playing of Peter Tchaikowski's 18-12 overture to begin the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. And Notre Dame and USC locked up in a 21-21 tie. Only one touchdown scored in that third quarter by the Trojans. Now, Notre Dame threatening at the 14-yard line of USC, but they have a third down and three. Pete Carroll marshalling his defense. Travis Thomas, the running back, behind Brady Quinn under center. Fake the pitch. Quinn has it. Lost it for Samarja in the end zone. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. Another nice play by number 29, Scott Ware. So that, that ball was thrown high, wasn't it? Yeah, Samarja came down with it, but couldn't get a foot down. This, this is just trying to take the advantage of that all 6'5", you could call. His left foot was on the back line. 
But good body positioning by Scott Ware. He does catch everything, though. Even, you know, even though that's out of bounds, but man, does that guy have some hands. Once again, that using that 6'5 height. And, and Samarja will hold as Fitzpatrick attempts the first field goal of the game. It'll be from 32 yards. Fitzpatrick puts it up and through. And Notre Dame reclaims the lead by three. 32-yard field goal by D.J. Fitzpatrick. Puts Notre Dame in front, 24-21. 10 seconds into the fourth quarter. <laughs> he is tough indeed. You'll be hearing a lot more about Jeremy Bloom. He's uh, tabbed to be one of the stars of Team USA at the Winter Olympics in Torino, Italy, next February, right here on NBC. Now, Matt Leinard still doesn't look right, does he? There's Reggie Bush awaiting the Fitzpatrick kickoff. Bush took it away from his own man. Flag is down. Bush ducks out of bounds knowing there's a penalty marker down against the Trojans. I think they could call block in the back. That yeah, was pretty obvious. Was Me meanwhile, that's Jeff Samarja, I think. That would be a blow. Or is it Anastasio? During the return, block in the back, above the waist, number 83 of the return team. Penalty will be enforced half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, instead of getting the ball near the 35-yard line, inside the 15, and it's Chase Anastasio. It is Anastasio, 23, not 83. 23, Anastasio, injured. And he's the one that threw that real key block for Tom Zibikowski in the punt return. Very good special teamer. And, you know, every time that USC has seemed to be challenged this year, they have responded, Tom. You know, in, in Oregon, they were behind in that second half. There's Samarja. Arizona State, they were behind. But they, they absolutely responded like a champion. We'll take a break while they tend to Anastasio. 24-21. Notre Dame with the lead. After USC's first penalty of the second half has put the ball back on the Trojan eight-yard line. You know, Matt Leinart, Leinart has not thrown a touchdown today. Remember, he had thrown nine in the two prior games. Against Notre Dame. He does have two interceptions. Loudest part of the stadium for opposing quarterbacks. Flag is down. Reggie Bush bouncing the other way. We've seen it do it, seen him do it so often. Ducks out of bounds, but a flag back at the five-yard line. A gain of 29. Should it stand? <laughs> you talk about, you know, making something out of absolutely nothing. Holding call against USC. You know that adage about the shortest distance between, you know, two points is a straight, <laughs> straight line. line. Uh -uh. Yeah, not not for Reggie Bush. <laughs> It'll be nullified by the penalty. Two penalties in a row for the Trojans. Holding offense number 67. Half the distance from the previous spot. Replay first down. Ryan Khalil. Yeah, he, is, he is the center right there. You know, that's when you get such quick penetration that Derek Landry, you know, he, he causes a lot of holding penalties. And this is what you lose. The dynamic run by Reggie Bush. We talked about the uh, three Heisman candidates on the field today. Leinert, Bush, Quinn. Seems that Bush has enhanced his credentials the most. Leinert hangs it up. Jarrett can't hold on. Ambrose Wooden running with Dwayne Jarrett. 
Okay, th this is a really important series for USC. Down by three points as the fourth quarter starts. As Jared has it momentarily. Yeah, the ball hits the ground. But if they can't manufacture some way to pick up a first down here, Tom, you know, Charlie Weiss's offense is going to get pretty doggone good field position. So this is a critical series of downs. The next two plays for this USC offense. It's second down and 13 from the Trojan five. Liner handing off Reggie Bush. They collared him that time. There's Landry loss. again. Landry just coming right through the attempted block of Ryan Khalil. Got that penetration and what took a, Bush down. What, what a couple of plays by Derek Landry. I mean, he forced the hold on the first play, right, when Reggie Bush had gotten into trouble. And then again, one more time penetration and tackles Reggie Bush in the backfield. Second down, 14. The Irish come with a nickel defense. Well, it's third down. I'm sorry, what did I say? Yeah, second, yeah, third, third down. Liner from his own end zone. Harm hit as he released incomplete Maurice Crumb. Minter, the defensive coordinator, dialing up another uh, you know, blitz at the right time. Maurice Crum, one of those delayed blitzes. Maurice Crum saw his back stay in. He knew he could release and blitz the quarterback. Malone punts from the back of his end zone. Irish set up the return. Zibikowski chased back to his 44-yard line. Block in the back, flag coming against the Irish, another flag down. Lambert is going to be whistled for the block in the back. So penalty against the Irish. 52-yard punt. And the penalty will cut into what was a 12-yard return. You know, it's amazing how a nose tackle can have such an effect in a series. And, and Derek Landry from Notre Dame did. Meanwhile, Matt Leiner just missed his last five passes. Four of those coming since he was shaken up. He doesn't look quite right. He, he really doesn't. During the return, illegal block in the back above the waist. Number 20 of the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Whistle against Lambert. Puts the ball back at the Irish 35-yard line. 13-22 on the clock. Charlie Weiss and the Irish trying to upset the Heisman winner, Matt Leinert. And as high-flying Trojans who've won 27 in a row, it's a three-point game. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Comcast Digital Cable with HDTV, your place for high-definition sports programming. By SpeedPass from Exxon and Mobile. And by Pioneer Plasma Displays. Experience more at PioneerPureVision.com. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson. David Gibson, our producer, Jeff Simon, our director. It's been a great one as Pete Carroll tries to rally his top-ranked Trojans on the sideline for the final 13-22. Their 27-game winning streak in jeopardy. And 12 winning uh, games in the road they've won. Pete Carroll doubling up as the defensive coordinator for the Trojans as well as being their head coach. Irish start from their own 35. Pitch to Walker. Tough yard. Defenders getting penetration and hopping on his back after he got the handoff. Lawrence Jackson and Scott Ware. And the running game shut off by the Trojans. As we remind you, today's first and ten line is brought to you by Xerox. Right, that's what Charlie Weiss would like to see get over that yellow line a few more times. Eat up some clock. Manage to extend the lead. To Grimes, David Grimes made a nice move. And get their third and one. Second time they run that play. Remember earlier, Darnell Bing stopped it for Vince about a three-yard loss. Stopped it again, but 
for a first down. Ball came loose, but it was ruled down as being tackled David Grimes, the freshman from Detroit. The second time they run that little reverse, Bert, uh, Bart Darnell Bing hits him first, and then Grimes goes down. Hits him first, hit him first and last. Marked it uh, just short of the first down. So third down and less than a yard. Okay, Oscar Lua, the middle linebacker for USC in a situation like this, has played really well in short yarded situations. Do you sneak? Well, they've, been awfully, again. Yeah, they've been awfully successful with it in the past. It's the same formation they did before. Empty the backfield. Quinn does keep and drives ahead behind his center, John Sullivan. For a first down. Yeah, anytime your quarterback picks up an easy first down and a quarterback sneak, your center is usually doing a pretty good job. And John Sullivan did it there. And he, we keep talking about how strong Brady Quinn is. You know, he's got big upper body, strong legs, just kind of a powerful guy. So the shadow starting to lengthen over Notre Dame Stadium. The house that Rockney built, 75th season. Look at the time of possession again, 31 minutes for Notre Dame. Travis Thomas turns the corner, lowers his head for an extra couple of yards. John Walker forces him out after a six-yard game. And Travis Thomas, one of those guys, one of those backs that likes contact. You know, some guys run to daylight, some guys bounce around, but Travis Thomas, He's going to try to run through you. And he just about did there. <laughs> Sets up a second down and four. Touchdown Jesus looming over the scoreboard here at Notre Dame Stadium. Three tight ends. Thomas. First down. Good blocking up front. He crosses that yellow line and has another Irish first down. Keith Rivers to stop. Charlie Weiss would love to have that ball control that he's practiced so efficiently throughout the game on this drive. You know, Tom, I think the most difficult thing to do as a play caller is be patient with the running game. And boy, Charlie Weiss has been incredibly in, uh, patient with this running game. Hadn't been a lot of flashy, long runs, but he has hung in there with it and, and you know, stuck to it. Now, that's a luxury of having a close ball game, but very few teams will have the patience to keep running it at you. Travis Thomas had 19 carries the first five games of the season. That was his 16th. Here's number 17 in this game. The one Ramsey, the nose tackle of the Trojans. Cedric Ellis also. Hey, the way that Notre Dame has controlled this game, USC's defense, I think, to win this thing is going to have to cause a turnover. You know, down by three, this Irish offense continues to hog the ball and grind out first downs. Second down, eight. Quinn steps up and then is tackled for a loss on the play by Thomas Williams. Tom Hammond, Pat Aiden, Lewis Johnson, Notre Dame Stadium. The greatest intersectional rivalry in college football, the 77th meeting between these two teams. Number one ranked USC and ninth ranked Notre Dame. And a quick reminder that coming up next in primetime, NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing from Lowe's Motor Speedway, presented by the Principal Financial Group. That's coming up at the conclusion of this matchup between the Irish and the Trojans. This is the matchup that they've had success with today. Maurice Stovall against John Walker. Quinn sets up a screen pass. Darius Walker with a blocker in front. Walker with a kick back to the center of the field. On his feet inside the 20. 25-yard gain on the screen pass to Darius Walker. Ryan Ting finally caught him from behind. Yeah, the Irish have become a very good screen team because they've got some offensive linemen that can move. You see Santucci, number 50. You see number 78, John Sullivan. You see 74, Dan Stevenson hustling down the field. 
You know, another patient run or, you know, at, run after the catch by Darius Walker. Almost like a run. Less than 10 minutes on the clock. The ball just inside the Trojan 20. Well, they've converted a lot of third downs, haven't they? They have, and they haven't faced that many throughout the season so far. As you said earlier, they've been so efficient on first down. Walker kept his balance and managed to gain three, four yards. Frosty Rucker, who's been quieter here in the second half after a, a good first half for the Trojan defense. He's kind of following up on the point on third downs. Notre Dame has converted 10 times on third down. Remember when Pete Carroll came out at halftime and said, we've got to get him off the field on third down. Rucker to the sideline. Jeff Schweiger replaces him at defensive end for the Trojans. Two to one time of possession for the Irish. With Charlie Weiss said you've got to score touchdowns. Travis Thomas. Trojan defense is able to string it out toward the sideline. Thomas tries to cut up, but nothing there. Give Schweiger, who just came in, credit for the tackle. Yeah, well, Pete Carroll right now desperately needs his defense to make a play and force a field goal attempt to make it a six-point game, right? Especially the way the, the uh, Irish have played ball possession today. Absolutely. You know, th this is the most important third down of the game. Third down, eight from the 17 of USC. Quinn steps up and threw it over the head of Schwab, his fullback, who was wide open and had a first down in his sights. Charlie's in. They're going yeah, to kick the field goal. He thought about going for it on fourth, but sends in DJ Fitzpatrick, who. He's been an unsung hero. Again, head swap wide open. One of those things that he thought he was going to keep going. Swap settled down. Just a little miscommunication. So the Trojan defense does its job, holding Notre Dame to a field goal attempt. Fitzpatrick, 35 yards. He hit one from 32 earlier. And that one's going to be wide right. Never had a chance. No good. Well, D.J. Fitzpatrick, who has been seven or was seven of eight on the year. Misses from 35 yards. It remains Notre Dame 24, SC 21. Notre Dame Stadium in the gloaming from the Goodyear blimp. Goodyear Blimps celebrating their 80th birthday this year. Today, the spirit of Goodyear floats above Notre Dame Stadium, giving us our aerial views and reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new assurance tires. Three-point game, the total yards almost dead even. USC 331, Notre Dame 330. Time of possession heavily in favor of the Irish, though. There's the total yard situation. 7.28 on the clock. SC takes over at its own 20. Matt Leinert. Pass complete for a first down to Steve Smith. Gain of 12. Let's go back to the last Notre Dame drive because it's a missed opportunity in the in the absolute wide open for a first down is Aesop Swap. He, you know, kind of stops. And then the missed field goal to keep it a three-point game. So they had an opportunity, really, to put the Trojans in a bind and let them out of, off the hook. A couple of fakes, and Liner's going deep. Smith overshoots him incomplete. Boy, I tell you, Reggie Bush ran a fake reverse, and had they thrown the ball to him, he was wide open. I mean, there wasn't anybody covering Reggie Bush down the sideline. There's a guy, in, he's, he's averaged over 12 yards per carry today. See, watch Bush on the, on the fake. Now he's throwing the ball to Steve Smith, but Reggie Bush is going down that left sideline open. Green pass, incomplete, intended for Bush. 
That's a play USC has run with great success over the last three years, but today, that's the third time they've tried to run that little quick screen inside either to Lindell White or that time Reggie Bush. Twice Brandon Hoyt stopped it, that time the rush by Victor Abiyamiri. Third down and ten. Irish come with their nickel defense, five defensive backs, Richardson and Dukeway, Zibikowski, Wooden, and Fareen. USC, a four-wide receiver formation, trips to the bottom of the screen. Reggie Bush right there. Leinert, pass caught for a first down by Dwayne Jarrett. Ambrose Wooden took him down, but not until he had first down yardage. Well, Heisman Trophy winners respond, don't they? That's, that's what you expect. I mean, on the road, critical situation, Matt Leiner comes through with a perfect pass to Dwayne Jarrett. It covers 12 yards, first and 10, Trojans. Jarrett out of the game. White and Bush in. Here's the hand to Reggie Bush. Bush being chased. One man to beat and gets him out of bounds at the sideline. Nice call by Lane Kiffin, the offensive coordinator. You know, a moment ago, they faked the reverse to him, and, and he was up here in the booth, I'm sure, watching what was going on. Remember, we said he was wide open. If they had thrown it to him, well, this time they just handed it to him. And it's effectively a long pass anytime you give him a chance to put his hands on it. 21 yard gain. Wooden got him out of bounds. 11 carries, 142 yards rushing for Reggie Bush. Good call by Lane Kiffin. There's the offensive coordinator upstairs. Irish 34, first down. White. Lindell White. Grinds it out to the 30. Okay, Lindell White is usually breaks through some of these tackles, but that defensive line and those linebackers of Notre Dame have really squeezed down those inside runs. Yes, Reggie Bush has been dynamic on the outside, but boy, they've really taken away the inside runs. And that guy, Brandon Hoyt, has. Leonard's pass wide open. It's caught on the sideline by McFoy. Wooden catches up to get him out of bounds, but a big gain again for the Trojans. This one 11 yards and another first down. You know, we haven't really talked much about this USC offensive line, but watch the offense, the protection they give Matt Leonard. He pumps right, comes back to his left. You know, Pete Carroll was saying this is the best offensive line that he has had in his five years at USC. 18-yard line of Notre Dame, first down, clock approaching six minutes. Reggie Bush hit behind the line and dropped for a loss. Mike Richardson, the cornerback, gets Reggie Bush for a loss on the play. Yeah, just that corner blitz by Mike Richardson. He's going to come off the top of the screen. And then David Kirbin, the fullback, just, just cannot get to him in time. And Mike Richardson had an interception in the first half, a big stop of the dangerous Reggie Butch there. Loss of three, second down, 13. Matt Leinert, plenty of time. Now he's going to pull it down and run. There's a penalty marker. It's going to be a hold, I think, against USC. Brandon Hoyt prevented further damage by tackling Leinert after he made it for a gain of a couple, but the flag comes in the area. But Leinert looks to be celebrating. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Umpire threw it, but personal foul. Personal foul against the Irish. And then umpire threw it real quick and early. So it happened very early in the play. Trying to figure out whether it's an automatic first down. That's what Pete Carroll was asking the official. Little foul. Defense number 66. 
Mm. Penalty will be enforced half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. And it's Derek Landry who played so well at nose tackle in the last series, Tom. Costly penalty against Landry. Number 66 right in the middle of your screen. I guess it was a hand to the face of Latui. First and goal, Trojans, Reggie Bush. Bush, touchdown! Wow. 149 yards rushing on just 13 carries. He is enhancing his Heisman credentials today at Notre Dame Stadium. Trojans regain the lead with just over five minutes left. And a very important extra point. You know, as advertised, Reggie Bush has been everything you expected, right? Expected a, and more. Yeah, expected a dynamic player, and that's what we've seen. Danello's extra point is good. Reggie Bush probably worn out. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit like Barry Sanders. Every time he touches the ball, you kind of hold your breath. Richardson can't get him, and it's Yeah. And one of the subtle by. things, he kind of moved the ball from his right hand to his left to allow him to use his right hand to get a defender off. Superb run again by Reggie Bush. USC, after their first really sustained drive all day, 10 plays, 80 yards, engineered by Leinert with Bush doing the damage. And Heisman Trophy winner, thrown uh, for 230 yards with the two touchdowns, but Reggie Bush has been phenomenal. To the three rushing touchdowns, I mean, you know, if you are a defensive back, it's like one of Dante's nine stages of hell trying to tackle this guy. I mean, he just, he just, he's here one moment, gone the next. Powerful, fast, and great vision. 36 yards, 45 yards, 9 yards on his touchdown runs. The first three rushing touchdown game of his career. The USC still has its work cut out for themselves. Over five minutes remaining for Charlie Weiss's offense. Van Barkham in the end zone. Ambrose Wooden is coming out with it. I don't know if that was a good idea. It was not. <laughs> You're totally right, yeah. Well, he was good five yards deep in the end zone, and he tried to bring it out. And the Irish will be backed up inside their own 15-yard line. A mentally tough team, just like your coach. Both these teams mentally tough, like their head coaches. And I know what Matt Liner's thinking. He's thinking, hey, I still may have to win this thing. It's, it's a long way from being over. 5.04 on the clock. That's Walker in motion to empty the backfield. Reset to the wide receiver spot. Quinn, short drop, crossing route, Samarja. Yeah. Crosses the 30 to the 32. Irish first down, a gain of 18. They're trying to protect maybe John Walker a little bit. Rather than in coverage, they blitz John Walker that time. He's the corner that they've kind of worked on. Brady Quinn sees it, reads it, throws the slant route to Samarja. Big first down. Samarja takes it to the 45-yard line. Walker forces him out of bounds. Improvisation by Brady Quinn for 14 yards. Unbelievable. You know, the, the presence of Brady Quinn, eyes always downfield, really good vision, good footwork at the last moment, and boy, did he take a shot. His, remember what his Charlie Weiss said about Brady Quinn? He says he's all day tough. I mean, he, he just took an absolute shot, bounced right back up. And Samarja helping his quarterback by 
turning and going upfield when he saw Quinn having to run to get away. 45 yard line. Samarch is the motion man. Quinn cross slant again to Stovall this time, and he takes it to the 40 yard line. Well, it's a matchup they keep they keep working on. Maurice Stovall and John Walker. 15 yard gain on that one to Stovall. You know, perfect, you know, ball placement. Sometimes when you throw those slants, you throw it behind, you throw it home, but a perfect throw out in front of the slanting receiver allowed him to run after the catch. Three for three. They have it at the 40 yard line. Quinn with a word for Samarja. Still plenty of time on the play clock. I think it's easier sometimes in this situation. They absolutely know they have to score a touchdown. Quinn. Oops, did you hear that? Fasano mm. hung on despite that hit. Ooh. Boy, did he take a shot? I think it was Colin Ashton, the nickel linebacker, number 59. Six yard game. Look at that. Protection up again up front by John Sullivan, the center. Well, he's had, he's had a heck of a game, John Sullivan. Charlie Weiss, Pete Carroll, the chess match. Draw play, Walker. Frosty Rucker twists him down, but not until he has a first down. Yeah, I thought Frosty Rucker may have saved a touchdown, though. That was that second time we've seen that quick hitter, a little different kind of run, as we've talked about for Darius Walker, kind of a change of pace run. And Frosty Rucker hangs on. Otherwise, I think, you know, maybe he doesn't score, but he has another 15 yards. This is going to be a fun last three minutes, Tom. It's got to be delicately timed, yeah. too. Well, you know, Charlie Weiss is going to say he's not going to get another possession. He's not, he's not planning for it, right? He didn't want to leave SC in too many seconds to try to pull one out. Here's a draw play again. Darius Walker bounces to the outside. Walker's down the sideline, racing inside the 10. Scott Ware saved a touchdown, a gain of 20. First and goal, Notre Dame. The patience and the vision of Job, a.k.a. Darius Walker. Again, these kind of runs that Charlie Weiss said we'd like to have him give it to him, let him see the entire field, pick his spot. And he did it again. Four downs to take the lead for Notre Dame. Ball at the nine-yard line, first and goal. Clock's inside three minutes. Quinn hands to Walker, moving the pile ahead to the five-yard line. Now, Darius Walker is, is short, but he is not small. You, you said moving the pile. It's exactly right. He's over 200 pounds, and he moved about three white jerseys an extra two yards. Walker to the sideline. Travis Thomas replaces him in the backfield. Leinert getting him some attention on the Trojan sideline. Reggie Bush. Scored three touchdowns today. They need a fourth. Second down and goal. Five-yard line. Empty backfield with Thomas in motion. Quinn, the short drop. He's going to take it. Quinn and Brady Quinn. Stop. Touchdown. He got the ball across the goal line. Touchdown. Using a block from Travis Thomas and stretching that six foot five frame out, he manages to get the ball across the plane of the goal line for the touchdown. You know, I think he's had more significant runs today than actual passes. First rushing touchdown he's had, the extra point. Fitzpatrick is good. Brady Quinn, three for three through the air, a five yard touchdown run to cap off the drive, and Notre Dame. 
seeing the lead evaporate comes right back with a long drive that began inside their 15 yard line and this was the clincher yeah and, you know Tom it's one of those empty backfield situations you know get everybody spread out give Brady Quinn a chance and it's exactly what it did he, he, you mentioned he picks up a nice block by 26 Travis Thomas and extends the ball over the goal line for the touch Brady Quinn what do out it's a He's got his own legend in the making, doesn't he? How about the dramatics? Well, no, that still 204. Yeah. That, you know, that's nothing for this SC offense. We saw them have, what, two or three yeah. touchdown drives of only a couple of plays. You know, just we said it just a few moments ago. I just had the sense that Matt Leinert knew it, that he was going to have the opportunity to win the game again. Matt Leinart and the Trojans, they've won 27 in a row. Through the years, Notre Dame has ended these long streaks. Will they end the Trojans' 27 game winning streak today? The first time USC has allowed over 30 points in a game since its last defeat when Cal beat them 34-31 in 2003. Fitzpatrick's kick. Reggie Bush. Hold on to your seat. And the special teams of the Irish stop him at the 25-yard line. And about 70,000 people exhale. <laughs> two timeouts for the Trojans. Just under two minutes. Salvatore number 43, the man that collared Reggie Bush. Never heard it this loud in here, Tom, ever. And that means I think you've got to be careful with audibles. I think you have to go with what you call. True test for a champion. Matt Leinert. Turns the other way and fires incomplete. Intended for Jarrett. Leinert has hit only three of his last 11 pass attempts. It seems like every time he releases a two, he's taken a hit. I think you got to get the ball, Reggie Bush, don't you? One way or another, give him a chance. He's right there. Liner at sack! Trevor Laws, the junior from Burnsville, Minnesota, with a loss of 10 on the sack of Matt Leinert. You know, first it was Derek Landry, and then just a hustling play by Trevor Ross. Actually blocked on his knees and keeps scrambling to get into the legs of Matt Leiner. And USC will use one of the last two timeouts. He was down, but didn't quit. Just keeps going. There's Chris Fromm, number 75, who was injured earlier in the game, the starting defensive end, the Californian, who has come back out of the locker room. He can't play. He's injured. He's on crutches, <laughs> but he doesn't want to miss this. Well, they've come back from off the ropes before, That's but right. this is as tough as it gets right now for the defending national champions. You have two downs to get 19 yards. I think the smart play is not trying to get the whole 19 here, Tom. I think you try to get 8 to 10, maybe 12, and give yourself a chance on fourth down. Two-time national champions trying to respond like champions. The Heisman winner under center. Third down, 19.
Matt Leiter, good protection, completes the pass. Passes to Bush. And he stops short of the first down. It'll be fourth down coming up. It's okay, but he picked up about, what, eight yards? He did what you said. Yeah, he got right right back. Yeah, that, that, that's the right idea. So they have a manageable situation. They're going to use their last timeout. But they're in a fourth and eight situation. Manageable. Brady Quinn, who engineered the last go-ahead drive for the Irish. Jeff Samarja, his favorite target next to him. Matt Leinert listening to the play call on fourth down. What drama in a game that had the biggest pickup buildup I can remember of any college game in recent years. All over radio, television, newspapers talked up. 27-game winning streak, two-time national champions. Notre Dame revived under Charlie Weiss, 4-1, and one, right ninth and the top-ranked Trojans, and it lived up to Billy. Well, as a quarterback, when it's fourth and eight, you make sure your receivers go down past those first down markers, right? And Reggie Bush, I think, is the only guy you give a chance with the ball in his hands behind that first down marker, thinking that maybe he can outrun some people. Otherwise, you got to throw the ball down past the first down markers. Well, you think there's any magic left in those green jerseys? The last three times they've worn them against USC, they have won. Have to get to the 35-yard line to get the first down. That's nine yards away. Oh, a tough time to audible. Leinert on fourth down, in the pocket, goes down the sideline. It's caught. Jarrett just stopped. Short of the 10-yard line by Ambrose Wooden. Could you imagine calling an audible at that sign and then and then delivering? That's that's why he won the Heisman Trophy. That's clutch. That's national championship play. 64 yards to Dwayne Jarrett and another hustle play by Ambrose Wooden to save the touchdown. Yeah, yeah. How many times Ambrose Wooden's done it? Three times on hustle plays that preserved three wins for Notre Dame. This was an audible. And this was pretty good coverage. He wasn't wide open by any stretch of the imagination. A tight throw, a perfect throw to Dwayne Jarrett. Matt Leinert with a clutch delivery to his roommate. First down, Trojans, 13 of Notre Dame. Leinert looks right, looks left, tries to run, then puts it in the air, incomplete intended for Steve Smith. Well, he could have run for probably seven yards on that one, but felt they could force the ball in there to Steve Smith, who came open late, just couldn't hang on. What, what a throw, what a call. Those guys are roommates in the offseason. So you're, you're, you're in that line, or you know, you're all, nowhere you're in field goal range if you have to go that route. So just don't take a sack. Second down. Reggie Bush dodging, darting, tackled. SC has no timeouts. And so Notre Dame guys just kind of hanging on Reggie Bush on the pile. Got Six yard gain for Bush. Well, third and seven, you give Reggie Bush another shot. I would give him a chance in the, in, in the periphery. No timeouts for USC. Bush stops short. I think he got the first but down. did pick up a first down. Yeah, but 23 seconds remaining. Now they'll stop the clock for the first down and then mark it ready for play. Zibikowski saved the touchdown, but Bush picked up the first down. Yeah, you know, Matt Leinert's got to get his team up to the up to the uh, up to the line of scrimmage. I think you either got to you, you have to throw the ball here. I don't think he can run it for 23 seconds. Do you? No timeouts. Empty, empty backfield. Empty backfield. So. Would they dare run a quarterback draw? Matt Leinert rolling to his left. He's going to tuck it under. He is stopped short. The clock's still running. Did he get out of bounds? Time run out. The clock says zero. Notre Dame has won. Chaos. 
They're still talking. Fans on the field. Officials still talking. Down at the Notre Dame student end, the students are all on the field. And now they're going to clear the field. See if Matt Liner gets out of bounds. Remember, no replay in this game. Ball comes out. The ball's out. Ball comes out. So that the clock should have stopped, right? There were about five seconds remaining. The clock should have stopped. One official sig signal touchdown, but the ball clearly came out. USC will get one more play. Seven seconds put on the clock. Charlie Weiss still out on the field. Seven seconds. And SC with the ball going out of bounds. That's Pete yeah, Carroll saying just down it. Down it, yep. Yeah, they're just going to down this ball. Liner going to try to sneak it ahead. He got in. Touchdown, SC! Broadcast they lost in college game against Miami a few years ago, but this is as good as it gets. Incredible last three minutes. And you know they were decoying him with with the uh, yes down it down it down it. Carroll saying down it down it. Leiter saying to his men, we're going to down it, we're going to down it. It was all a decoy. He kept but, it, but and, it wasn't easy, was and it? And no, it didn't make it on the first surge, and then was sort of spun around and broke the plane to the goal line. As entertaining the last three minutes of a college football game I've ever seen. And now another huddle by the officials. One thing for sure, we have awakened the echoes today. Flag down. Might be a celebration for them running on the field. It is unsportsmanlike against USC. The most improbable finish of scene. Well, we validated the fact that these are two of the best teams in college football. We validated the fact that Reggie Bush is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. Yeah, he Matt was. Liner delivered in the clutch like a Heisman winner should. And the Trojans playing like national champions should. You know, once again, they take in some incredible body blows and looks like they hang on to win. After the score, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the try. And how bizarre, Pat, that if Liner doesn't have the ball dislodged and knocked out of bounds, clock runs out. SC loses. Absolutely, the clock runs out. So misfortune proves to be good fortune for the Trojans. The ball dislodged, knocked out of the hands of Matt Liner short of the goal line, but because the ball went out of bounds, the clock stopped and gave them one last chance. So the penalty assessed extra point try now by Danello. And it's no good. So three seconds are left. Well, let's, let's go back to that sequence of plays, Tom. First, this is the play when Liner didn't get in. Ball comes out. Corey Mays knocked it out. Goes out of bounds. That stops the clock. Or they get actually five seconds back or seven seconds put back on. After faking like he's going to spike it. 6'5", 225-pound fullback or quarterback turned fullback, Mike Liner, uh, Matt Liner gets in the end zone. Another look. Again, that was stopped early. I mean, Matt Liner did run like a fullback on that play. They stuffed the early part of that quarterback sneak. And over on the Notre Dame sideline, wow, what a tough way to lose. Three seconds left. Brady Quinn played like a champion. When the Irish needed a touchdown, he Absolutely. took them down the field. Was perfect through the air and scored the touchdown to put them ahead. 
And then Matt Leiner delivered the big game to Dwayne Jarrett. On a, fourth and on eight. Fourth down, deep in his own territory. On an audible. And then comes back and scores with second effort, the winning touchdown. One would assume with three seconds left, barring a miracle finish here by the Irish. Well, you know, I'd, I'd onside kick it or certainly squib it. I wouldn't kick it away. You know, I would expect to see one of those... Uh, Cal plays where everybody gonna laterals it as much as you can, but I we expect USC just to squib this thing. Stanford band not on the field. <laughs> the Reggie Bush is on kickoff coverage now too. He's gonna be the deep man in case they need him. Trying to lateral it back, still trying to find somebody. And finally, it'll be down, and the Trojans have won. Two heavyweights of the college football world, two of the best programs in all of college football, 11 national championships each way, locked up in an instant classic here at Notre Dame Stadium today. Pete Carroll and the Trojans, Charlie Weiss and the Irish, a bizarre finish, and the Trojans pull it out like national champions that they are. They've now won 28 in a row, but none more difficult than this one. Let's go to Lewis. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Pete, can you just describe what we've witnessed here, one of the classics in the USC Notre Dame history? Huh? Yeah, it's a pretty big time game, fellas, man. It was, uh, they did a wonderful job today. Really, hats off to what they were doing here. It was a great day to play in this, this stadium with this kind of energy, and it's awesome to get a freaking win. Awesome. Pete, how did, you get the t how did you get it back together when you suffered uh, turnover as you were? Your time of possession was way out of your favor in the first half. These how do you guys really around? do believe. They really believe they're going to win. I mean, you got to believe you're going to win the way that happened, you know? Uh, and they they felt it and they didn't give up on the thought that they could win. That's the best thing I can tell you. It looked to me like late in the second half, Liner must have taken a blow to the head or something. He didn't look like completing himself, but at the end of the game, there he is taking he the ball. We needed him. He made the big plays, made a great pass to DJ, and then knocked it in right there. That was an awesome finish right there. Uh, what, a, what a great day, man. It's a great day to be a Trojan. I know that. See you later. <laughs> okay, Pete. Tom, back to you. He wants to celebrate. Yeah, not so great, I guess, to be a, an Irish because they thought they had it won. The students had stormed the field. Brady Quinn, heroic in defeat. Matt Leinart playing like the Heisman winner he is. Stopped initially, keeps churning ahead, breaks the plane of the goal line for the winning score. And of course, some good fortune for the Trojans too. When you're good, things do break your way. The ball out of bounds stops the clock and they get another chance. You know, for the great, incredible day that Reggie Bush had, Matt Leinart won it at the end. He was superb at those last 30 seconds. Reggie Bush, 15, carries 160 yards. So now, let's join Bill Weber in Charlotte for primetime NASCAR Nextel Cup racing presented by the principal financial group. So long, everybody.